Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me back from a while, you've been busy, it's Alex. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Feather, and also I'm kind of sick, so if I sound weird, please go go easy on me. Um, and my show and tell today is that I have tea because I need it for my throat to feel good, even though I don't enjoy tea. You really wanted to be on this episode. I really needed to be on this episode. So listen, yeah. we made a commitment. I read the um, lost metal on my tiny phone on my flight from Mongolia and uh, this is so that I could be here today. You've been really busy. I'm so busy guys. (laughs) Uh, Also joining us we got David. Hello I am the one and only wind runner on the internet and on 17 shark. (laughs) Very unique. Also joining us is Evgeny. I wish I could unironically say that I am the only Argent out there, but that is also not true because sometimes I go to websites and try to register and very often my name is taken. Wow, rude. Uh, And lastly, but definitely not leastly, it's Jess. Hello, I am Lady Lameness and I have never had the problem Argent has except once and I thought it was <laughs> my account and tried to log into it for about Oh, on Reddit, minutes. right? Where you tried Reddit, to like yeah. uh, reset no password. No one ever has my username. <laughs> Why did this person? It's, like, it's got to be one of these emails that I have for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Chaos and so first up, spoiler warning for the Lost Metal. Get out of here if you haven't read The Lost Metal, because you know what? We're ruining the analytics by having a weird, vague title, okay? So get out of here. We're doing it for you. So read the book and then come back because you got stuff to talk about. This is a very aggressive spoiler warning. Spoilers for like all the other books. Yeah, everything else in the Cosmere. Like absolutely everything in the universe. Not to your projects. Not Not secret secret projects. projects. No secret project spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll or good. Storm My Five Prologue spoilers. We're not going to do that yeah. either. So, oh, can I okay. ask what the title really? of this episode is going to be? I'm really curious now. Because uh, <laughs> I know what we're talking about, but I don't know what our vague title is about it. Moonlight's is. Mentor. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> that. That's it's good. good. That's fun. Thank you, YouTube commenter, that I don't remember good the name, but job. I could look up. That was the best one we heard. Nice. So, this episode, we're going to be talking about Kelsier. And uh, there, there's some. Show and tell. So let's let's get into it, Evgeny. What do you got? Okay, so I have I have three things to show you. Oh guys. my god! One of them is this lovely little like Christmas themed mug, That's uh-huh. which Cheers. I am I am sipping Cheers. some uh, mulled wine out of, Ooh, which is nice. delicious. Nice. Thanks for doing that. Item on number camera. two. <laughs> yeah. No, I had to. Item number two is so. You guys know I went to uh, the Dragon Steel convention a mm-hmm. couple of weeks back, and I met uh, many wonderful people and many wonderful artists there. And one of them was the famous Marie Lamary Lamary. Ah, yes, in the Cosmere. Um, and she gave me. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> It looks really cool in person. Why don't you take a photo and I'll I'll put it. Oh wow! Holy crap! <laughs> so this this one is shiny. Yes, I that, can tell. Really Anyways, so that, that's that's in um, existence. That is Amazing. that is that in our in lift. Okay, let's try a different sticker. Hold up. <laughs> well, that's preferably with no green. All right, there we go. Easy. There oh wow! Go. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh wow! Choose that. your path. Is, wow, that's oh that's like really nice. cool. With the symbols. Yep. Oh man, mm. that's yep. good stuff yep. there. Uh, I think that is all I had. What was the third yeah, thing? Uh, was it was two job. different, two different stickers. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, on, honor, honorable mention that the, awesome pin. Meryl flower pin's good. Uh, yeah. it is. Topical. It's also sold out. Topical. It's like one of the very few. So they, they made that available in the Dragon mm-hmm. Steel Bookstore Cyber Monday thing. And the pin is one of the few items that is sold out. All right, Jess, you, you, you have something to tell, at least. Yeah, so I have no show, but I have a lot of tell. Uh, completely coincidentally, I had a dream last night that Kelsey was in. <laughs> and in my dream, I was a part of the Ghost Bloods, and we were basically co-opting the Church of Survivor, where there was just like this small community, they were all part of the Church of the Survivor, 
and like worship Kelsey or Ensure, and we were like, yeah, we're just gonna use you to do outbidding. But at one point, like I had to like go around and like bless everyone, and there was somebody else in the ghost squad. So it's like you, you, you're not a priest. Like you don't have the qualifications to do this. And I like just turned to Kelsey and he looked at me. He's like, now you have the qualifications. Go do the thing. <laughs> This sounds like something he would do. That's the worst part. It's very plausible, actually. <laughs> to, to be fair, him co-opting the Church of the Survivor is actually also plausible. Uh, I kind of want to see that. Yeah, I kind of like, do too. Co-opting the Church of Survivor, not necessarily my dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Church of the Survivor. Though I if just... I can be in the Cosmere, then... Mm -hmm. I, I won't say no e except like the only time that my name is in the cosmere i don't want to be that person oh right there's in the a prologue. jesse and miss bond one and it uh in doesn't the prologue. go well for her and i don't want to be that oh, person that's the ska yeah. there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oof. oof all right going to another oof alex you're on the show anyone who's seen uh shard cast knows why you're on the show with your opinions Ugh. about Kelsier. Uh, so I, I expect you to bring a lot of engagement to the comments, Alex. So thanks a lot. Thanks, YouTube commenters. Love you. So uh, why don't you give us a abridged a uh, Kelsier rant updated to Lost Metal? Also, this would be a good solo video that we should have you do sometime. That's really would. true. Also, really would. I, I should specify my correct opinions on Kelsier. These are the correct opinions to have on Kelsier. I so. really think that will help the engagement to say uh -huh, that uh -huh. other yep. opinions are false and yours is the only also, correct one. I know, really think you, that'll help the engagement. If we I, want I, com Oh, go ahead. Uh -huh. I recognize that you believe you're correct. Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> you I think appreciate you're that. correct. <laughs> um, if we want engagement in the comments, I just have to pe tell people that my tea is microwaved and then we'll get tons of comments. Oh, okay, great. So, cool, cool. So, there you go. You're Alex I is you just said your tea the comments. It wasn't microwave though this time. They used the kettle. Yeah, my kettle. So you're I just lying. Know, it beeped um, yeah, when, it was, when it was done. Yeah. Okay, so, Kelsier. <laughs> Here's my thing about Kelsier that people always get wrong. First of all, I don't think Kelsier is a poorly written character. I think Brandon writes Kelsier very well and very consistently, and I do think he's interesting. Okay? All right? No comments there. <laughs> Second, I don't think that Kelsier is the worst person in the Cosmere. I think there's plenty of people who are much worse than Kelsier, many of whom I find deeply attractive. So, like, obviously that's <laughs> not an issue for me. So... <laughs> He, Kelsey could go lower is what you're saying and you'd be okay with that he could be worse he could be worse um, there's so many people who've done it. like people are always like Kelsey hasn't done that many bad things Feather why do you hate him so much and I'm like it's not about like moral stuff alright morality is an axis that doesn't concern us alright name that quote my problem with Kelsey is that he's freaking annoying <laughs> everything he does just drives me crazy you His in particular presence is like fingernails on the chalkboard of my soul and i just want to <laughs> strangle him whenever he shows up because i'm just like stop causing problems you just cause so many problems and you don't need to like you're supposed to be a sort of good guy and you're trying sort of but also you're just the worst. He's the worst. He drives me crazy. The best. The best. So there you go. That's a, that, my feelings on Kelsier are about his personal philosophies being terrible to me. I can't stand them. And making several cults. And making why does he make so many cults? <laughs> Ugh, so unnecessary. Why is this his go-to way of solving problems? Like, uh, look, what, what works works, Alex. You know, no, like, broken, don't fix bad. it. It's bad. <laughs> I hate it. What could possibly go wrong with all of this? Ugh, he drives me crazy. But yeah, if you want more of my Kelsier opinions, I have definitely talked about him on Shardcast before. Yeah. Uh, Cosmere Reefs. Oh, yeah. I think I was probably on the Thytokar episode. Was yeah, I on the Thytokar episode? Yeah, I think you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we <laughs> usually make sure you're on a Kelsey episode. If you enjoy my previous Kelsey rants, you will probably get new Lost Metal opinions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, I hear that there were people wondering why I wasn't on a um, Lost Metal reaction episode. It's because this is the only thing I need to react to. All right. 
this is the important stuff right here. Also, you were very and busy. also enjoying a lot of international travel, so yeah. that was part of it. Yeah. But yeah. I'm here now, Look, even though I'm sick. This is how much I love you guys. Yeah, right? and Kelsey. Or is th- or is this how much you hate Kelsey? Or this is how much I hate Kelsey. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> one it. of the two. Would you both? If yeah. you like Kelsey, I have no problem with you. He's just so aggravating, and I can't stand him. Thanks. Yeah. Do you have a an immediate reaction to share by any chance of like when you got to chapter what 39 or 40 or oh, when like, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. turns up like what what was your reaction alex that's that's like when he shows up on the sea on call yeah, yeah, right yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay all right i will just quickly say i think perhaps the most aggravating thing that kelsier did in this book was that he didn't give me enough to be annoyed by. He was like, <laughs> remarkably normal. And I'm like, you're not going to win me back over just, just because you were on good behavior here. Like, it's not enough. All right. You've done other things and you're not forgiven. All right. But yeah, I was just like, mm, all right, Kelsey, let's see how you're, let's see how you're doing. How are you doing in schedule right now? Be back on screen. How are you going to, yeah. I was just like, so, see so there are three is four. Yeah. <sighs> what? Alex, what a great segue, because I yeah. wanted to start with talking about Kelsier's personality, because we have not seen him since Secret History. It's been three centuries. He's a cognitive shadow, and there's always this idea that people's perception of cognitive shadows could perhaps change them over time. And, you know, it's three centuries. But in this book, he feels like Kelsier. And like that it was kind of surprising to me, like it wasn't like a dark edge it was just like yo it's just kelsier Mm -hmm. and i think that part of it too comes from the way that yaddle talks about him sometimes Mm. and it's probably at least in part because of like her own harshness but i feel like when she like we get things back from thytokar it is like master thytokar was very displeased we couldn't secure the oath gates or like (laughs) that like that sort of thing or just you know thytokar as a threat or as a i i think that some of it is probably just filtered through Yaddle being a particularly awful ghost blood and terrible person. We'll talk about her. So I also think at least like in this community, like 17 shot people who are like very into behind the scenes, looking at wubs and all of that there. I noticed it when I did the reread for span reads that there was kind of a split in the way that I perceived Kelsier in the book versus how I have perceived him outside of the book. And I think like we've gotten a lot of information about Kelsier through Bubs and other things that we do tend to kind of latch onto. Like I'm thinking like the um, sociopath Wub, like people talk about that a lot. But then you read like the first book of Era One and like Kelsey has a lot of empathy and he does have a lot of caring. It's like, oh, I kind of forgot about this. So I actually really liked in this book that he was still quite similar to the character we got in the final empire. And he didn't feel super different in the way that I had kind of started thinking about him because of how we talk about Kelsey outside of the books. Yeah. And this is this is one of the reason reasons Alex is wrong about Kelsier. <laughs> okay. I'm never wrong about Kelsier. <laughs> um, Put your comments below as to who's right, Evgeny or Alex. Ha- we need we Fight. need hashtags for this. Uh, Ooh, obviously, okay. hashtag Team Kelsier is one of them. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna make the um, the Marvel meme, but for. Civil, the, oh, civil yeah, war. Yeah. War. <laughs> that meme's yeah. still good. Yep. that's a solid yeah, meme yeah. still. Yeah, we we get we get value out of that every. Yeah. I, I think a lot of the issues people have with Kelsier are issues that don't stem from Kelsier personally. They are like a step or two or more removed from him. It's what Brandon has said about him. It's what the Rosharan Ghostbloods are doing. Um, and, and we see him in, in the Lost Meadow more on his home turf with ghost bloods that are ironically not schedrian at all um, <laughs> they're not schedrian no they're not uh but they but they are like close to him and with him right um like th- there's a genuine affection for twin soul in in kelsier that we see in the epilogue 
And and there's also probably genuine screw this guy towards Glaville, which is always good. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I, I don't know if I got that from that, but yeah, I, I didn't either. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, he, needs a, okay, yeah. he needs a bit of a leash, you know. But like, yeah, we, but he didn't get a lot though. Yeah, yeah, he's like, we didn't kick him out of the crew. He's a member of the crew. <laughs> he is. Yes, yes. I was quite um, fond of him. I don't know what you're saying. So. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm shocked. <laughs> Bray's awful. <laughs> Blobble, awful. But Kelsier, ah, I can't. That's a step too far. I, I yeah. I think I think the problem is Kelsier is not awful enough for Alex. That's true. Hands. It's true. Mm. I I will say that <laughs> a lot of the Kelsier that we see in this book is Kelsier that is also trying to put on a face that would be persuasive to Marasi joining the ghost bloods. Mm. And so I don't think he's that different. And like, we see him speak to say and he's not like, you know, a cackling maniac or anything, <laughs> but like th- this is recruitment mode Kelsier that we see a lot of and mm-hmm. recruiting someone who is pretty, pretty by the book, like, you know, out of law enforcement. So it's not like he's going to lead with some of the worst things that he does. Mm. I think Kelsey is very good at being able to know how to approach people and which way is best to try and get whatever he wants. Like thinking about it the way you just put it, David, it's very similar to him approaching Vin, Mm -hmm. but Vin and Marisite are very different people. They're like on the opposite ends of the spectrum of like, how do you approach this person in terms of their values in society? And I think Kelsey is very good at, picking up and recognizing the ways to approach these people. And like, he's charismatic and part of being charismatic is knowing how to use that charisma in your favor, depending on the person you're talking to. Yeah. I I think you're right that this was kind of probably Kelsier on his sort of best behavior in front of Marasi. Um, I, suspect that the ghost bloods did like quite a bit of research about who she is as a person and what would be potentially persuasive to her like the whole moonlight taking her back to the base to show her a little bit and i think they probably know that she's a survivorist too so kelsier didn't need to lay it on really thick he already knows that like he's a religious figure to her and if he comes on too strong it's going to be overwhelming he needs to be sort of like normal human like the low level charisma is all you really need is um that sort of thing but i do think actually that like the kelsier point of view in the epilogue is like where i was like "Mm, yep that's the kelsier i know and hate where all of a sudden he's talking about like there's always valid targets for heme allergy and i'm like Uh, you know "Ah, "Ah, you're driving me crazy that's 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 very believable for kelsier in era one like he is like he totally is he's like ah nobles to kill Eh, you know it's tuesday you know yeah look you sometimes you can't make an omelet without breaking a few skulls yep with a spike yeah, uh, you know whatever implement you have at hand. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Jess, you you talking made me realize that I think it was Mraze who who bonged up the Shalon job. If Kelsier had had found a way to contact her mm-hmm. and like be her contact Ooh, for the Ghost true. Bloods, he she would have just yeah eaten the whole thing up so much like i think marie's tried to do the right uh direction of like hey i'll dangle some secrets but he did like that way too hard and i think kelsey would be a lot better at being subtle with that and kind of drawing her into the point where she feels like she has to keep going to learn more whereas yeah i i would agree with that and and mraze was a little bit too threatening at times like there was an implied threat of oh i here are your brothers i know Mm -hmm. like he's he he never actually threatens her brothers but like the implication is i know where they are they are under my thumb right Um, Mm -hmm. similar thing at the end with uh with kalak yeah I, I think it's important to note that one is that Marie's didn't make a recruitment pitch to Shalon. Shalon showed up out of the blue to a meeting that Tin was supposed to be at and just like right. appeared. And the other thing is she didn't show up as Shalon. She showed up as a veil 
And so Marie's tactics to recruit her were always very focused on that veil persona. He only found out about like Shalon as Shalon much later and sort of never really quite shifted the tactics to actually make that persuasive. I, I think it was actually probably a good pers- pitch to veil, but veil wasn't the only part of Shalon that needed to come around to it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. and I do think that Kelsier here fails at what is an even potentially easier opportunity where Shalon, he's kind of asking her to betray the radiance <laughs> and, and, and Marasi, he's just asking her to move to a higher level of protecting Scadrial right. and like, you know, make some ethical, go move into an ethical gray area in some ways, but not like join autonomy or something, you know, which isn't <laughs> quite what Shalon is being asked to do, but she is increasingly being set against the goals of the radiance. Mm-hmm. And Marisai is very much like, this is the same goal that you're aiming for. It's just a different method. And it, it is that question of morality and what Marisai is comfortable doing to attain that goal. Yeah. See, I, it, it's interesting that you say that because I see it as exactly the opposite. I think Marisai uh-huh. was a lot more difficult of a, of a recruit because the ghost bloods are asking her to like go against her like principles of like her entire morality right whereas with shalan like she is very open to like doing not not double crossing people but like almost playing both sides right uh like she's not gonna betray the radiance she's not gonna join odium she's not gonna leave her husband and family and friends on Rashar, but she will happily like kind of go behind their bags uh, behind their backs and do her own thing as long as her own thing which is the ghost bliss thing doesn't like harm anyone that she cares about i mean her first book plot is an infiltration of the heist so like <laughs> She's always, she's always kind of been that person. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's also a valid perspective, Arjun. They they're mm-hmm. both they both got their challenges. Uh, yeah, I, I do agree. It's it's a it, what what pitch do you give to a Roshar? And it's like protect Skadriel. It's like well, I mean that's I don't really know a lot about that. So you know, I am impressed how many off worlders Kelsey has successfully gotten on <laughs> team protect scadrial because <laughs> it's, it's really at this point there are not many scadrians to speak of no. i i do wonder if maybe that has played into what happened with marisai where he, he's used to being able to recruit people who have some sort of goal and he's like well come to my side and i will help you with your goal and in return like you work for me and things like that and he's found this person who has a very similar goal to him and focus too much on that and kind of coming into the downfall that Argent was talking about where Marisai has really strong moral codes and he didn't consider that that might be there and like that would have an impact on whether or not she like does things uh in the very straightforward legal sense or the shadowy dark gray sense and maybe that matters to her and i wonder if because he keeps recruiting off-worlders who don't necessarily have really strong attachments to any one particular community at that time true that has kind of influenced the way he approached marisai who does have that strong community tie of like i want to protect here in the way that i grew up learning about it kelsey you're not thinking about morals what a shock the the downfall (laughs) the downfall of kelsey Uh. i mean i think it also speaks to like marasi almost has this sort of edge dancer sense of wanting to look out for the little guy the sort of the, the forgotten the when we see her talk about like the impact she wants to have on society it's about like I want to make sure that people aren't mistreated in the way that like makes them become criminals later in life, Mm -hmm. sort of a big picture, Um, which is sort of a big picture scope, but it's a very different kind of big picture than Kelsier's into, which is the scope of like shards and the Cosmere and cosmic threats. And Kelsier has always really kind of seen 
the the people, the masses as sort of a tool that he can use yeah. and he can manipulate to his own ends. This is something he did during the final empire, which I think people called him out pretty rightly about like the way he used the ska. And it's like, yeah, you did it for them, but it was also a lot about you. It was a lot mm-hmm. about, you don't see yourself as their equal. You don't see your, them as the same as you. You don't treat them the same way. There's that sort of, yeah, disconnect in Kelsier. He still has that empathy for them, but he still mm-hmm. sees himself separated from them. He, he can't get himself out of the way to sort of like actually just help people for the sake of helping people, I think. It has to be about him. It's always got to be about him in See, some way. See, this is, this is why I find him so relatable. <laughs> ah, ah. See, it is, it is funny that Alex and I are basically saying the same thing and we have completely opposite views on Kelsey. <laughs> But it's interesting because Laris was like very firm to Kelsier in Secret History that like the hearts and souls of men are not your playthings. I'm not getting the quote right, but we didn't really see we didn't see him do that really here. Like I want to see more of Kelsier to see if that did change what he has uh, really felt because again. We're really not seeing much of Kelsier here. Like we we can infer things about Kelsier reading Stormlight, but that not be accurate to what he's actually doing, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe the things mm-hmm. in his brain are not like, you know, they didn't turn out in actions and they can still have issues perhaps, right? But maybe mm-hmm. he has changed since Final Empire and we just haven't really seen that. But he is very worried about the cosmic threats and honestly, kind of rightly so, uh, I think. Like, it, I, I, it's hard for me to disagree. That's like, autonomy is a big problem. Skadriel's in danger and Harmony's not doing enough. I, it's pretty persuasive to me. And she's yeah. coming back. And she's coming back. Yeah. I, I don't think he's wrong to be focused on the scope that he is. But I, I understand why there are others who sort of can't can't stomach it. Um, mm. I think Marasi kind of rightfully calls him out about like, how long have you known about what was going on in Bilming? And you didn't tell anybody. You did it yourself. Maybe this could have been stopped sooner if you had shared information, but that's not the way they operate. And that that makes sense. But I think I'm a little bit more like Marasi in like, <laughs> these these people aren't like disposable in the way that Kelsier kind of treats them though and it is the really rules and regulations kind of... being important miss skybreaker with your skybreaker <laughs> yeah. pendant uh, on here i can't imagine why to like get a little bit more like soul bearing about like my history with Kelsier and part of the the issue is so at one point like Kelsier was my favorite character in the Cosmere i used to say that actually when i time. was first getting into the Cosmere Nice. But part of it was that I I misunderstood his character a little bit in Era 1 in that I thought this sort of deception that he pulled over the Ska and the fact that he had convinced them that he had like divine powers that was going to save them all, that this was like a terrible thing that he was like sacrificing to make himself because it was the only way it was a terrible thing he had to do to the Ska that he could, you know, force himself to do and stomach it. In order, in order to get the result that needed to happen. And it was a good result, but it was a terrible thing. And then as we saw more of Kelsier and we saw secret history and we saw the way that he's acted in Era 2, I had to sort of come to face the fact that Kelsier didn't see it as a terrible thing. And in fact, Kelsier probably liked it. Kelsier kind of enjoyed being, making himself a god and in a way like tricking all of those people to have faith in him that he didn't deserve and it's like oh that's just it it curdles in my soul and but it's why them. i can't stand him did he not save them maybe they he should did have save him yeah but he did a terrible thing and thought it was good to do it and that's the bit that i'm like no we're never we're never gonna be on the same same page on that kelsier I do wonder, um, because this book, uh, completely kind of unrelated to Kelsia, but it gives us a very clear um, similarity between Wax going up the stairwell, killing people, and Harmony giving the vision afterwards. And a lot of people have talked about, like, Vin um, going to the mansion with Sane and doing a similar thing. And there's a very clear parallel 
that there that Brandon seems to be pulling. Listen to Alex talk. I'm wondering if we're going to get a very clear, deliberate parallel between Kelsier and the Lord Ruler, because he's doing something that seems very similar to what the Lord Ruler was pulling mm. in the I am all powerful. I am God. You should worship me um, like I will help you, but only in certain ways. And it, it, it kind of it, it plays into the like, is Kelsey going to be the villain? Is he going to be the hero? Is he going to be in between? We don't really know yet. Um, but yeah, I'm just wondering if we're going to get a very deliberate um, parallel scene from Brandon. It's like, no, Kelsey has become the Lord Ruler. He has become the person he tried to take down. Interesting. Like, it, I mean, it's always fun to see Ah, someone who, you know, I think the ends are more important than the means. And then it's like, well, then you turned out to be the Lord Ruler. Oops. Yikes. You know, things like that can be very fun. Kelsier. I mean, he's obviously not the Lord Ruler, to be clear, Mm -hmm. but like it's going to be interesting to see that evolve over time and see what happens in era three, era four, if he survives. Uh, I hope he does. Uh you got to see yeah. the Kelsey or Hoyt <laughs> conflict as we progress. No, I feel like we're rid of it yeah. anytime soon. No, no. Yeah, I feel like that's end game. It's going to be yeah, end game. Kelsey is going to be there for the end, yeah. whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He survives to the end. Classic. Uh, <laughs> we'll many more. Like, we'll have like Kelsey or part five shard cast, you know? Because, like, I mean, <laughs> we did the Lord of Scars episode, which was basically a Kelsey or episode. And this, yep. this is yep. another one. You know, I think that's pretty pretty optimistic that you think that it'll only be Kelsier episode five. Oh no no no! Well, I mean, who, who knows when that's gonna be? Oh yeah, by the end end game. Oh yeah, we're we're like on episode twelve of uh, this. Like every new book, it's like all right, we got to do another Kelsier podcast. Kelsier saga. Oh. And and all of them, and none of them are called Kelsier. None of them no, are called. Yeah, Kel- yeah. coming up with different names. <laughs> to, to be fair, though, after this book, I think you expect to see Kelsier on screen in era three, and so like I think in this book, right, it's a surprise to literally see Kelsier on screen talking with main characters and getting a viewpoint of him. Like I mm. thought we might get some, but I didn't expect uh, like. Oh, we're just talking with Kelsier here. Like, He's oh, okay. There. He's just there. Oh, <laughs> yes. holy crap. You know? Yeah, I was definitely expecting more of a marsh at the end of Alloy of Law style, where he's mm. like at the end and everyone's like, oh, you're Kelsier. And he's like, yeah, I'm Kelsier. Come back and book a book eight to see more of me, you know? <laughs> but he was really in this one. He was. Yeah. He was. That epilogue, so good. So delicious. Um, I will say, I really Marsh is the best. If anyone's wondering what my opinions on Marsh are, Marsh is the best. He Marsh deserves a better really product. good. That is not a hot take. We, yeah, I think I think everyone's like, oh, my God, Marsh. I want more Marsh in the book. So good. I really get the feeling going off of this book. Like, I would be surprised if going into Era 3, Kelsier is not a character that turns up relatively frequently. Like, maybe not a main character, but probably not a minor character either. He's just, like, actually there in the book on screen doing stuff instead of, like, being the references in the background. It mm-hmm. just feels built to that point now and it'd feel a bit weird if he just wasn't there at all after this 100 percent. he's going to be around a lot in era three i think yeah oh man this 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 is this is so interesting uh i i'm i love (laughs) kelsier just because like there is that gray morality that like he is doing good things that but sometimes in a bad way, but like you can kind of see where he's coming from, right? You know, he he will do things to advance his goals. Uh, I want to talk about his relationship on, like to Roshar and how maybe him advancing his goals in this way might bite him in the ass real good. Uh, maybe antagonizing the Radiance, not great. <laughs> you know, that might not go great long term, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, but it's, so interesting to wonder like what his storyline is going to be in era three uh i i feel like all we really know is i mean we're probably going to get more ghost bud stuff and we're also going to get an extension of this epilogue this kelsier versus harmony aspect because like i think they're really setting that up with that epilogue Mm -hmm. that like oh something's yeah this is going to come to a head in some form uh isn't era three uh serial killer misborn 
You know, there's that more serial killers. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I know a lot of people have theorized that that will be Kelsier in that well, book. But after well, this book, I'm like, is he going to be evidently that straight not. out of villain, though? <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll talk about his powers very soon. That's a great segue, yeah. nearly, but... Yeah. I do think that it the Mistborn serial killer aspect of Brandon's Era 3 pitch has not been as prominent lately. And he I do talk think about that, it. Yeah. That some of his <gasps> law enforcement stuff, he did get out of his system a little <laughs> bit with this because he spent four books talking about the police now. So I think maybe he's like, okay, I've done that a little bit. And so I could still see it being an element, but I do wonder if it's going to become a, like a B plot or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It also seems difficult to like drive uh, an era one sized series just off of that, right? Yeah, you can yeah. you can drive a book off of yeah. that, but not like the the premise of the entire series has to be something else. Yeah, like yeah. and there's so much have, to do. Mm-hmm. You also kind of have the problem of like Shadows itself was sort of like that, like. Mm. A bit. Not quite Mistborn, but that was kind of the plot of Shadows of Self. Yeah. So you need to make it different enough that it doesn't just feel like it's the same thing over again. Mm-hmm. I think that's true. Yeah. Uh, do we think there's any odds of Kelsey or like, like I assume he'll have a POV once or twice, but we don't think he's going to be a POV character for Eric. Not a main so one, I don't I think. I don't think for the first book, maybe in later books. Like, that's I think. Kind of, yeah. I, I think uh, yeah. the first book of Era 3, we're off the rails, whatever, but uh, like Kelsier, <laughs> we do it's need to do a, like Era 3 speculation podcast because like there's so many okay. words of brand of like what's even going on anymore because I think things have changed. Book one, we're going to introduce a new cast. I think there's going to be Northerners. I think there's going to be Southerners. We're going to have a Cold War style thing, right? Uh, with the bands. <laughs> okay. Uh <laughs> Well, maybe we'll deal with that at some point. Uh, and personally, I hope there's going to be competing viewpoints because I love like, ooh, the protagonists are against each other. That's like my favorite part of Elantra. So it's like you see Hraithen viewpoints and it's like mm-hmm. opposed to mm-hmm. our main protagonist. And so it'd be cool to have like a mm-hmm. northerner POV, a southerner POV and just them like going head to head. But I do think, you know, we're we're going to see more of the ghost bloods because we have to see someone actually actually in the frickin ghost bloods we can't go three books of no like hey join the ghost bloods now nah. <laughs> like we, we have to see someone actually in the ghost bloods. Oh, and i i feel like we we could get a ghost blood we'll see kelsier and then like as things expand in the rest of the trilogy we get more Kelsier viewpoints as he's more and more prominent. And I think that's a very natural sort of thing. I, so I don't think for book one, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Kelsier viewpoints are dangerous just because <laughs> they like, well, he's running the ghost bloods, you know, so like at various <laughs> points, he's got to do ghost bloody things. And so unless mm-hmm. you want to like lay the operation out, you you can't do it that often. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's the same problem that we have with Yasna POVs, right? Yeah, very true. Well, the same thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. Um, going off Eric's point, I could very much see Brandon amping it up if Kelsier is meant to be a main character in Era 4, mm-hmm. where, like, at the start of Era 3, like, smaller, and then, like, by the end, it's like, okay, cool, you're looking forward to seeing him in the main character role next Oh, sick. That'd be so good. Oh, yes. You know what I could see? I could see Era 3 do for Kelsier what the first half of Stormlight does for Navani. So, like, what? Okay, explain. So, I thought so, I knew, but then I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> in, with the Way of Kings, Navani is a character that's kind of there and and we meet her a couple of times well more than a couple of times but these are big books she's a small and character she she's a small character yeah she, like she's there but like the plot is not about her um she interacts with other characters and that's her job in the book and then as we get more books in the series we get more action from her mm. sure okay 
Okay, see, my, my read on that was, I'm like, I don't think Kelsey's going to get really into Fabriel's Argent. That seems unlikely. <laughs> maybe the ghost ones, though. The ghost ones, maybe. I, I don't think you think I agree. He will, uh, he'll, he'll hire someone. He, he will. No, I'm the money. Good luck with that. <laughs> I couldn't get Shalon or Yasna. Let's go to Navani. That'll go great. <laughs> Sorry, we tried to assassinate your daughter. Would you like to join Hearts? us? <laughs> I know lots of information. I know you, you know. I know even yeah. more. You like science. I like <sighs> science. Bring children in cages. <laughs> I, I like. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know how well the Roshar, the ghost blood pitch is to Rosharans when you have Shalon and Yasna be like, yeah, no, they let me tell you all the crap they've done. It's like, yeah, maybe that doesn't go so great. Maybe don't try and recruit the Radiance. Let's enumerate all of the times they've tried to kill us. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, if they got I, to your Ethera first, it would have been different, but tough crap, you know? Missed that one. Yep. Um, I did have a thought about something we were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, sorry to like yank us back. Okay. But about Kelsinger's personality not being that different mm -hmm. from what we'd sort of seen in the past. I wonder if that is something that he's manipulated intentionally. Um, as I think we've seen a lot of Kelsier being very strategic about sort of realmatics in particular. I know I just said the R word. Please be proud of me. <laughs> um, <laughs> he is thinking about contingencies and things that could affect him, especially because he is in a different state of being than he was before. Um, he's very concerned about what it means to be a cognitive shadow We've heard like Thydekar is very interested in the Heralds because they share a similar affliction to him. And I think that that's actually a little bit more, I think that goes deeper than them just being cognitive shadows. They're both cognitive shadows who are religious figures on their home world. Mm, and I true. think there is an element of the Heralds madness that sort of comes from the way that they have been worshipped because that has to influence your cognitive sort of aspect if there are thousands and thousands of people having a worshipful attitude towards you. And so there's a part of me that almost wonders if like Kelsier has been tr sort of probably getting spooked to do it initially, but probably like messing with the doctrines of the Church of the Survivor to try to keep himself similar in the minds of survivorists <laughs> so that they will not change him by worshipping him. Oh, like, okay. I think he might be like stacking the deck of like okay they need to think about me as me so that i stay myself hmm. over the centuries i think this is a thing he might have done jess i had the exact same thought as you were saying it alex um of because at this point kelsey has several different pseudonyms that he goes <laughs> by but it does seem like they are different to how kelsey presents himself when he turns up on screen so, like, is he trying to separate these pseudonyms of the survivor, of Thydekar, of the Sovereign, all of these things from who he actually is? So even if people are worshipping oh. these ideas, oh, okay. that idea is not him. They are not worshipping him, so they are oh. not affecting him. They are worshipping an idea that he has created and kind of shone and onto a wall, and that's what people are looking at instead. That's a fascinating wow. idea. I like both of these a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one I prefer or like better, but both are very interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> I do this... think oh, go that ahead. short of him coming out and being like, I am Kelsier, it would be hard to strongly influence Survivor Doctrine as just like a single person, or you would need like some prominent ends. You know, maybe you appear to some archbishops of the survivorist church and you're like yo i'm kelsey or you gotta listen to me <laughs> start start preaching this way guys but i think he would have to be pretty deliberate about it to do it if, that way if that was his plan i i wonder if there are also perhaps um some identity shenanigans happening mm -hmm. of kelsier finding realmatic ways to sort of shore up his sense of identity mm -hmm. against mm -hmm cognitive shadow degrade because i think identity is one of those powers that we haven't really seen much of a purpose for other than like 
letting people use magic powers they shouldn't because they don't have the right identity key. I think Kelsier would be very interested in that like surety of self part of identity, like compounding identity to sort of counteract the influence of mm. cognitive shadow radiation. Yeah, like nonsense. what does that even mean, right? Yeah. Like he, I think he'd be interested. I think he has so much connection to so many things on um, Skadriel that like he, I think he has figured out how that works and the ways that he's vulnerable and has probably taken steps to protect himself from the ways he's sort of realmatically engaged there. It's interesting that it's been, what, 320 years-ish? 340 years since the uh, Catacendra. And he's still dealing with the same problem. So it, it's interesting to think of what he might be doing in the background in that sense, Alex, of like, okay, how can I show this up while I also try and figure out how to not be a cognitive shadow anymore? But I need to kind of be aware of what I need to fix in the background of what I am currently in case I cannot make this work for a while. I don't know if any of that made sense. Um, so. but plans within plans within plans. There's always another secret. Uh huh. I, I think that is a great segue into having us talk about Kelsier's powers. <laughs> what powers? Or lack if, thereof. If, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, evidently, uh, Kelsier's not going to be the Mistborn serial killer, at least anytime soon, because he is not a Mistborn. And that is legitimately like we didn't know if he was a Mistborn uh, with this spiked back into a body. Right. Like that. Mm -hmm. Like we kind of assumed he had to to make the bands. And then, like, how, how does he get the ferrochemical powers? But he doesn't. Uh, yeah, so that changes a lot of things, I feel like. So that is quite surprising. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Like, it, it, it could really have gone either way. So, like, I don't mind that, like, he doesn't have the powers because it's a really weird roundabout thing that he's doing. Right. But it's just like mm -hmm. what the implications of that. That's interesting. And I can and I can. So one of one of the very few reasons I like this is because it was a little bit of a big deal in uh, in secret history that he didn't have his powers. Like they had a they had a little chat chat with uh, with Laris with Fuzz about hey you and I don't remember if this was this conversation, but like Kelsier doesn't have a valid connection to the physical realm, and and that I think is part of the problem. And so him stapling his body to uh, him stapling his soul to a body. Like it, it is still like there, there's still a piece missing, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, that prevents like it's still his soul and his soul doesn't have or it's still his cognitive aspect and that still doesn't have his power. Like, I don't understand how, how this all works, but it feels OK that it is not exactly the same thing. I tend to agree, but it was also always really possible in my mind that okay alamancy is hard-coded into your soul you know his soul is stapled into his body this yeah. body now has this soul it just works you know yeah but yeah mm. i i guess there might be something to do with the body itself like maybe there is really something physical in the body that is also a component to being able to do alamancy or the fact I, that it's not mm. his body and so there's like interference an interference disconnect right a disconnect capital D. That should be oh. a thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know what? And it can't even necessarily be that though, because if like let's say he's just in a standard body, like it, it like his powers don't register, it just thinks he's in a standard body. He should be able to use a medallion. He should be able to burn Laracium. And I believe the book said that those wouldn't work either. Is that the case? Burning uh, Laracium. Harmony Harmony says Laracium wouldn't work for him in his current state. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Yeah, medallions don't work. So that's not just, oh man, I don't have an Alamancer body anymore. That's, I've got a body that is, for some reason, repelling my it's, ability to take these powers up. Yeah, it's like Gimped. I'm, I'm thinking about the way that Marsh described him as well, as like, 
oh gosh, I almost want to go get the quote, but Marsh had something about how like Kelsier is not quite alive. I know exactly which one you're talking uh-huh. about. In the, in the police station. Yep. So um, that Marsh was more alive than Kelsier. Yeah. So, so Wayne. Um, and Wayne has this like freak out about ghosts are real. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Survivor. He's still alive. Um, alive. Marsh said, it depends, I suppose, on your definition. He is close to alive. How's that? You mean he's a ghost? After a fashion, he's less alive than I am, but perhaps more than other ghosts. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which I've always interpreted to mean he's a cognitive shadow that has been stapled to a physical body, right? So he's not quite a ghost. He's not a cognitive shadow, right? He has a physical presence. But he's not quite alive. It makes me think about how when you have power that is left to itself, it will manifest consciousness. And it makes me think of Spren and things like the door, but then also like you have shades, which are very different to Kelsier, I would say. Like shades and Kelsey are not on the same level, even if they are both cognitive shadows. Mm-hmm. So I can kind of see the different levels that Marsha is talking about in terms of like actually being a living person who has consciousness, can make decisions and do all of the things you would expect a person to do. But it is interesting how stapling yourself to a body doesn't necessarily give you that connection back to the physical in the way that having your own body did. Mm -hmm. So I have two additional pieces of evidence here, one of which that work in opposite directions, I think. (laughs) One of them is the Heralds, who are also cognitive shadows who come back to life. And I found it interesting that the Heralds themselves Brandon has said that they might have some some powers, but like the, the their surge binding is is not something that is inherent to them. It is in their blades, and so that kind of works with the idea that hey, if you return a cognitive shadow back to life, it doesn't retain its magical abilities. You need to give it another blade or whatever to to restore that functionality. And then I remembered that the fused exist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> David's just like, yeah, you know, just watch David. You go back 30 seconds and just watch David's face the, that whole time. Mm. Well, he, you know, the fused were a threat even before they learned how to command the surge, surges, whatever oh, yeah. that means. It, which, which is true, which, which is consistent with, hey, maybe the heralds also have some other abilities. But like, why do the fused retain or regain control over their surge when they come back Odium when their situation way. yes uh that's what i would say i guess <laughs> i think that what we're seeing here is my my initial assumption had been a hemorrhagic spike in a human it's basically the same thing as a fused coming back in a singer and i think now we've got evidence that that's not the case it's not as good of a possession, whatever Kelsier has done. Mm. He hasn't come to fully inhabit That's it. A really in the same good point, way. actually. And and like kind of like you might say with a returned, where like they're back, but they're not all the way back. You know, they're not they're not walking around where the fused we see do have to eat if they're not one of the nine and seem to be for all intents and purposes fully resurrected just in another's body. There are cognitive shadows that don't go quite that far. And I think that's kind of the spectrum that Marsh is getting at where he's like, okay, there are some that are insubstantial and really are like ghosts and there's kelsier who's mostly back alive but not really and then there's something like the fused like the heralds where you are truly resurrected in a sense well i mean the fused are not the bodies that the fused have are not their own they Mm -hmm. are taking over a living host neither is kelsier's yeah so but i i wonder if looking at it magically the magic is like well this body is like the body you were in and i does not distinguish between the singer body so it's like but this is your body and that is different to like taking a spike and like spiking something from the side and it's just like holding it to something instead of like 
encompassing it. I can imagine this visually, and I don't know how to. No, I say it. <laughs> there is something that we don't often talk about that I was recently reminded because I was looking at the Bulgarian translation of Rhythm of War. The Which name of the fused, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. There is a fusion there going on. They are the fused, right? And so there is probably a very functional, very meaningful difference between, you know, having a singer with their soul, right? And then another soul comes in and like blends together in a way that takes over the host, but doesn't erase so much of the host. Like the act of fusion might be what allows the fused to retain their powers as opposed to Kelsier, who was probably like, like, yeah, I know there are theories that this is Spook's body and he just like took it over in the same way as the fused. I don't think that's the case. I think like they gave Kelsier either a corpse or a mistwraith and, and he just kind of became that. No, you think it was a living thing? Uh, I mean, th- I think your whole idea about the Kelsey or Mistraith Condra thing is completely incorrect on every level. Oh. Uh, that's, that's I love funny. the idea that Kelsey might be a Condra. Not, I but, love that but, idea. But I, I, I want to steer still slightly off the rails to talk about the fuse because I think the, <laughs> oh, the no. thing. Yeah. We might have the same thought about the fuse because we were both doing the finger thing at the same here's, time. Here's the difference. Singers have a natural symbiosis. Yeah. Like you can take something into the gem heart and also what's in the gem heart means you manifest powers, right? And so the fuse are sort of taking that slot of a spren. You have the exact same thoughts, Alex. Yep. Yep. (laughs) This is like a physiological thing that the singer is capable of. Whereas like humans don't have that, so it wouldn't work that way. Whereas this is a way that like Odium is using to Mm -hmm. like make this happen. I wonder also because the the singers and yeah the singers have the more cognitive aspect to them as well compared to humans. I wonder if that actually plays into it as well and maybe, maybe makes it easier to maybe. blend back into the physical instead of just having kind of discrete categories that you have to jump from one to the other. I think potentially that's an interesting thought and I I would say, though, that it's not I don't think it's quite analogous to them going in the gem heart because we know with the fuse that there's not enough room. They can't fit in the gem heart. They have to eject the personality that it was in there and kill them. And so maybe that's like a path. I don't think it's quite the same. I I feel like the the singer physiology is more important for the fact that they're undergoing these transformations and it makes that super easy. But the other thing that has kind of. I'm so, I want you to come back and explain why you hate the Kelsey or Condra thing in a second here, Eric, because I increasingly think it's a possibility. I don't think that I'm, I don't think that he's in a corpse. I think that would be completely unhelpful. I think he needs a living body to be mm-hmm. in and they needed a living body and they either chose a Condra or a living person. And I have always wondered Condra or not Condra, Mistraith, yada, yada. Mistress, a living person. What happened to the mind of the person that was in there? Did it get? Does it get ejected by this process? Is it still in there somewhere, or because it's not a true fusion, as Arjun is trying to draw distinction with? Uh, so I think the reason I don't like it is because people looked at the playing cards and have interpreted it objectively incorrectly, and oh, wow. uh, and it's just I like how just to credit for it's just not being it's just person. not. It's just not correct. Where are playing cards, Jess? Are they just on your desk? No, or I gotta, they... I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, they're, they're like in a box that's in the cupboard. Oh, okay. All right. Evgeny, the for the show all right. get out the two Kelsier cards, yeah. Evgeny. We got to go through this. Mm-hmm. Hold up. Hold up. It's, it is important to not just look at the Kelsier card. No, it yeah, is we have to look at the whole that. set of cards. It matters. Yep. It yep. matters yep. Yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Yeah. All the Condra ones. ones. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so so uh listeners, viewers, singers, uh refer to the last episode for a little bit of show and tell. Yeah. Um there also. these are the cards that came with one of the packages at Dragon Steel Con. I think yeah. you can still buy them. 
I don't think mm-hmm. they're out of order. I might I might uh, put so, these on screen. Uh, so, but yeah, let's 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 show them. Yeah, like for, uh, for the I'll, I'll show them. And if <laughs> but on on screen is probably better. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. the diamonds you will notice yeah. have a theme mm-hmm. in that. Let's see. Uh, so that's this is Blessy. Blader. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, who's a Kandra? Yep. This is Milan. Yep. Who's a Kandra? Yep. Oh yeah. This is Tensoon. Yeah. Who's a Kandra? And this is Kelsier. That's Orasur. That's Orasur. Taking up Kelsier. <laughs> I agree, I agree he with that. He never had the ice spike. He never had an ice spike. There he is. Yeah. yeah. Is there I'm an ice spike to... there? Yeah, yeah, there is. It's, it's nice really spike. hot to see. Uh, if yeah, you're not I... at it in person, but is there it? is an ice spike. Is it? No. Uh, that did not, not look like that to me. No, 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 no. no. Okay. I, I will. I will. Oh, is it on the other Kelsier card? It's on At the least other one. one of them has an ice spike. Yeah, the, I yeah. swear, the, I swear, this Kelsier had an ice spike. Am I wrong? Yeah, that Your other one, sure. that one on okay, the left the one, one definitely yeah. does, and the one on the right absolutely doesn't. Uh, one of them is is, this is so Era One this. and is Orasur being Kelsier at the end of Final Empire, and the other one is Era Two Kelsier. It's it's uh huh. I would like to point out that the <laughs> yeah. spades are era one characters. They are, yeah. Yep. And then Vin, Ellen, the, and I think Spook is the last one. Yeah. Yes. And the diamonds, like, yes, technically Milan is in birth. And yes, our sir and our sir Tensoon is in birth. But the fact that Bleeder is included makes me think that that's era two compared to era one with the spades. So it seems kind of weird that they've put an era one Kelsier in the di- in diamonds and an era two Kelsier in the spades. I will also point out that <laughs> uh, spades Kelsier, yeah. and I'm, I'm sorry these are just refusing to focus, has the ghost blood symbol, yeah, uh, which is consistent with, hey, this is a spike, uh-huh. right? And other Kelsier, diamonds Kelsier, has Meryl flower. flower. Oh, that one focused mm. finally. And now, yeah, now it's focused. Yeah, well, that's because that's yeah, that's uh, the that is will flower incredibly significant to Orsier. <laughs> I'm just saying it's him pretending it to be Kelsier. It was dream to overthrow it's, the final. Image. I can yeah. I can accept that this could be Orsier because mists and mist cloak and and so the, the other thing that we didn't mention, by the way, uh, that you can only kind of tell if you look closely uh-huh. look at the the yeah these are not going to focus but yeah, the jawline the mm-hmm. jawline on milan and the jawline on this on diamonds kelsier yeah. both have like the skull visible yeah okay mm. so here here's the critical distinction if kelsier is a chondra in era two then he would have the uh or a mystery thing then he'd have the ice spike this playing card is no evidence to that whatsoever it's just not it it just isn't. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that. But this like, also doesn't I, I really disprove thought he had that he might be a chondro. No, no, but like you can't base it off the playing cards at all. <laughs> in my no, opinion, no, okay, fine. playing cards are circumstantial evidence. One. But like people were freaking out. It's like, oh, Kelsey is a chondro. I'm like, I mean, not by that logic. Uh, no way. <laughs> I think it's also worth keeping in mind that. A lot of people who read these books and who were getting these playing cards are not necessarily like the in-depth uh, <laughs> and completely obsessed readers like we are. So they're just going to take it as face value. So why would they create a playing card that's like, oh, it's actually this character that you're not going to recognize because they're playing this character. And like, you just have to know that this and this and this happens to understand this card. They're face like, cards. <laughs> what? I mean, should have made him yeah, Lord Renault. There would have been it, no confusion. And Alessandro Tremali is Renault. also a character, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, you know. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Uh, they could have put a first generation on there. Then we wouldn't have this problem. That would have been cool. Yeah. They could have been all <laughs> green, like goopy, slimy, and par. Yeah, goopy. yeah, yeah. 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 Con par, yeah. Um, I will. No, he's not first I, generation. I will nothing. He's second. He's second. He's second. He's yeah, that's healthy second. Uh, I, will, I will mention that Kelsier's spike is in the right eye, just for like sake of knowing that right is correct or right is right right as in not left okay, okay. okay. i thought we i thought it'd been canonized i feel i always think, I think that it's that, been yeah that was canonized in the book uh okay was well, it because okay. it, it's in the yes. epilogue right 
because yeah, I, I remember I, I that is canonized in lost metal yeah it is okay cool cool um we went through it on the copper mind patrolling. <laughs> yeah, that, that was okay. a thing we had to look at to confirm it. Because <laughs> I, I, I need no more asymmetrical protagonist, Brandon. We'll, yeah. we'll just go crazy. So, so okay. So, I just i <laughs> I don't like the playing cards as justification for that. I, I do agree. Theoretically, it is possible. It's a mystery. Like that. That that's fine. And like, obviously, I don't know the state of his body. That sounded really weird. Um, <laughs> so it, that, that, that's fine if he's a mistwraith, just not based off the playing cards. Okay. Uh, I think. Yeah, if, not, not solely off the. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would say the playing cards are neither evidence for nor against no. this theory. Agreed. They're immaterial. To I me, think... they more put the idea in my mind is that mm. this might be the case. Like I hadn't thought about it before. I was like, oh, that'd be cool. And now I can't stop thinking about it instead of it being evidence that this is definitely okay. correct or not correct. Okay. Also Fair at enough. one point that could have been ten soon. That's so true. There's, That's true. There's, That's there's, what, no, that is he a crazy didn't have thing. hair. I'm yeah. pretty sure he was yeah, bald. He was bald Kelsier. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's probably just the <laughs> artists. Like, not anyway. I think Evgeny's referring to Brandon's, the Wob. Yeah, in Brandon's head, Era 2 Kelsier could have been 10 soon. Oh, and okay. Kelsier. And so I think there is, there might still be some of that like residual idea in Brandon's head. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say, if we were talking about like, the way the singers sort of have an intentionally malleable <laughs> body to reflect changes of like a cognitive shadow. I think a Kandra is probably the closest you're going to get to like a Skadrian equivalent. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. If sure. you need, if you need like a body that's sort of able to change its shape based on what inputs you put into it, a normal human body is I, I don't because th- that was sort of the thing that threw me off when we had that first sort of memory of him and there's scars on his arms right. yep. and you're like why why are there scars on his arms what why mm. did, did he get his body back no a candra ate it there's no body there's just bones um and I, I think we've sort of seen like our cognitive shadows naturally able to sort of like push their identity form upon something that they're in but I think what we see with the fused and singers is like that is a natural part of sort of what singers are able to do is they shift forms and and change based on what cognitive entity is within them, whether that's a little spren or a huge fuse that has completely forced them out. I wonder if there is an aspect where the physical form has an amount of connection to the place. Because singers are native to Rashar. Kandra seem like the Kandra were the terrorist people, native ish to like Skadriel. And they just seem very highly connected to those specific locations compared to necessarily the average human being on one of these planets. Going off of that, I wonder if like because the physical form might be more connected to the planet that plays a role in, okay, you're putting a spirit back into this body that is really connected to this planet. So that kind of completes the connection chain, but from like the physical realm to the spiritual. Versus if you have a dead body, which once it's dead, is it really connected to the physical realm? Oh, That's the yeah. question. Yeah. Or if you just have bones, it's like, are they really connected to the physical realm? I'm just thinking like, Contra, like really magical, but are also very inherently Skadrian and the singers are native to Rushar and I'm like I wonder if that is part of it I I would say that my reaction to that is I don't think that I think most people are about as equally related to their planet and I think that was part of what we saw in Rhythm of War was that the humans are native to Rushar now for all intents and purposes and so I and I feel like the Chandra are just like you know, they are people, they're people like anybody else. And so like, they're more invested than your average person. They've got some spikes, but I don't know that I necessarily think that they're more connected to the planet than okay. wax, for instance. I will say, not that I'm abandoning you, Eric, but okay. 
if he is a mystery yeah. or like using a mystery to the exact same thing body, that I was going to say, I, I wonder. That would explain why he can't use Alabama. That's exactly what I was going to say, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a really yeah. good yeah. Yeah. Right? Because really Chandra can't use powers unless you have a trellium spike and you're weird and bleeder. Yeah. You know, well, except that. Yeah. Like, I know how to do it, but I won't tell you, sucker. <laughs> and he's just... Okay. Yeah. Although well, I will it, say this this paragraph in the epilogue because I went and, and found it again. It's so weird that he says back to back, you know, after Cezad lies to him that there's no Lorassium. Um, he says Lorassium would have been the easiest way, but it would seem but it seemed he would have to keep hunting. That gave him hope for himself though. Lorassium wouldn't have worked on him. Right. And like it's the easiest way. But it wouldn't have worked. I mean, maybe he's thinking like giving powers to other people, but yeah, yeah, that's probably that's 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 probably like reintroducing Allomancy into Skadriel in general. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm guessing. Which then the epilogue transitions into oh, we are now talking about how to bring proper metalborn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That does that does make sense. That is weird though. Like, why would Laracium not work? Like, it must just be the status of the body, right? I, I could see that Lori seem not working for a con. Like, yeah. That, that's a possibility that there's something weird going on. They are, I mean, have we ever seen anybody with a hemologic spike burn Lori Vin? No. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. No, because she, she had to wow. take it out specifically. Uh, no, this also was an she, end when it happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I could see, A, that not being possible. We've had so few people burn the Rassium in the it's series. It's Ellen. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Or Ellen and now Wax and Wayne. Oh, yeah, true. but the okay. contrast. Oh, Wayne. Wayne. Wayne had a spike when he burned the rock. Oh, you're right. Oh, Wayne okay. Right. So there nice. Go. There hey, goes that. One of our two examples. Two, three examples. There's, There's been, examples. been more Laracium lately. I need to be sure. That. <laughs> it's true. Don't it's tell true. Kelsier. That's true. Don't yeah. Kelsier. Yeah. So, well, it That's can't fair. be that. But I could see the Chandra being physiologically not able to burn Laracium yeah. for whatever reason. It, uh, I, I, I'm now interested in whether a singer might be, or like yeah. if that's a, a human thing, because. AT and Laris were humans and like they either intentionally or subconsciously made it so it's like keyed to humans or something like that. Yeah. With Chandra are really weird because the blessings are still weird. You can't just use any spike. It has to be a special spike. When are and we going to see it? Yeah. Do it anymore. No, they don't. No, they don't. Yeah. no, we don't either. No. Yeah. And so I'm like, I don't know how that's going to come up, but like there, there's a lot of Chandra weirdness for sure. Yeah. This could mm-hmm. also be something that um, Rushek did while he had the power at the Well of Ascension. If he was really concerned about oh, the terrorist sure. people getting Allomancy and mm-hmm. creating the Chandra was sort of like a way to fix like make sure that there were not terrorists born. He might have like done the additional sort of like restriction of like make sure they also can't use Lorassium because he now knows what Lorassium is. Mm-hmm. Just or, as like because he might not have known how it would end up as he was in the like mm-hmm. okay just to be safe just make them not able to burn that. Yeah, just or just like sort of restrict them from using magic. You know, like what if he'd yeah. accidentally made them into yeah. a sentient race that could still use Ferukami and suddenly they're shape they're shapeshifters who can. Yeah. Use metal yeah, edge in your life. That's not oh, what no. I wanted at all. Right. Uh, yeah. Just like a the way. There. Obviously, yeah. Trellium like threw a wrench into yeah, all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it's it's reasonable to me that like Rashek would would not have been able to account for like another shard showing up and oh, doing yeah, yeah, things yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 I, I would say circling back to Chandra <laughs> Kelsier. <laughs> yeah, let's steer uh, to anywhere that, near Kelsier, maybe. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, I love this that, episode. <laughs> the the thing that always brings me back to it is that Brandon has been approached about the idea of Kelsier's bones being valuable. True. And has continually said, like, that is very potentially helpful. <laughs> that could be useful. And I don't think you could put a spike in a skull and make a body out of it without like a shard doing something and so mm-hmm. the answer is, is the what goop? do we have on hand that likes bones and can Why? be a body for you, you know goop. like that's a fair point very straight. that's a fair yeah. point so the fact that kelsier doesn't have powers has a lot of implications and so he couldn't have created the bands right there's literally no way that that is possible i the caveat i will give is that we now have some precedence for people briefly having powers and then those powers fading in these new spikes that apparently sometimes briefly grant people powers. So I could see like 
early Kelsey are coming back, having Alamancy very briefly and huh. being like, oh, oh yep. crap, my powers are bleeding away. This isn't going to last. And the bands are potentially a valuable tool to make in that mm-hmm. moment. That, that's literally the same theory that I have. He comes back. He has powers. At some point, he realizes they are either fading or they're about to start fading. And he's like, okay, I need... Here's my contingency plan. Right? And, and it probably has to do with like, oh, like valid connections to the spirit, to the physical realm, things like that. There's also the excisers and whatever the hell's going on with those. And like we see the hemology experiments in this book and i know some people have been saying that like what they're doing like that is the excisers which i don't know if i fully agree with that but i can definitely see the similarity between what happens in the lost metal to what might have happened in the past and like if the bands were made by like taking other people's powers and putting them into an object using whatever method like i i could see it being more artificial than i think a lot of the theories i've heard have put it forward as like a lot of people have talked about like oh kelsey has to have these powers to do this thing or there's other people who have these powers and they do a thing it's like what what if we're actually just like using a machine to take one thing to put it into a different non-living object and making it a lot more artificial instead of like a natural process well you'd need something like that regardless of kelsier's allomancy to deal with the ferrochemy right like there need like how how we we've never known how that part worked we we're like at yeah. least he's got 16 and i was like okay now he's got zero <laughs> like okay i guess i'm thinking of the difference between like somebody picking up the bands and putting their powers into it in the way that a Farukamus does versus stabbing someone and then taking that and putting that into an object. Okay, so you think that the bands potentially could have been made in a way that didn't involve using a standard, like the way that, like a different way from how they make the medallions entirely, essentially. Yes, yes. I I, I think the bands could have been made completely differently but also the story might have been put forward that they have been made in a similar way. So the people believe that they've been made that way. And that's what is being perpetuated because that's a better story to tell people than like we stole a bunch of people's powers and like put them into a thing so we could use it. Like, I think a lot of what Kelsey did in the South is like a giant PR stunt. I don't think we know anything like, What's the legend of the band? Like, I think oh, Alik God. tells us that <laughs> the Sovereign just created those, right? And as then like left challenge. them as a, as a challenge. Yeah. So, yeah. like, there's no, like, origin story to these things. Yeah. It's, it's just that the Sovereign made them. But at least the way that it's portrayed when Alik tells the story, it doesn't sound like a negative thing it's like oh this person made this thing and it was a gift to us even if there was a challenge involved in it it's like this thing now helps us this person helped us this is someone we look up to like there is positives there sure absolutely i so i think my theory about like how did we get the bands is that this is a kelsier spook project that they started (laughs) on Real quick after the end of the Ash, the cut, the cut, the end of the yeah, Catasandra. He's a Mistborn. Um, Spook's a Mistborn. I think Spook is Spook is the Mistborn. I think Spook is where we got the Alamancy. Okay. I think they recruited a full Ferrochemist to help them out because those were still around at that point. But they weren't. Those that said was the last one. Was they, he? one could have been born, but he was yeah. the last one that they oh, knew okay. about, unless there was one oh. hiding in a corner. Because the Inquisitors explosion. killed all of the Synob in Well of Ascension. Yeah. They okay. killed all of them. And like Sazed Maybe had to struggle born. with being like the last fair chemist. That doesn't necessarily like need to be true. Like there could have been someone, mm. right? Potentially, mm-hmm. but we've also like seen the genes people... is still there. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they certainly are. They certainly are. We've also seen people who are suspiciously perhaps full ferricomists like running around on Roshar. Um, oh, no. So like, I don't Ooh. think, I don't think we're necessarily out of ferricomists. Um, so yeah, I think we have Spook and Kelsey are doing weird experiments, figuring things out. 
I think it's they figured out that identity is an attribute that you're able to store in stuff as they were starting to do different metals. I think they made the bands somehow. I'm not going to go into methodology. Listen, <laughs> y'all got me to talk about a lot of romantics on this episode, which I hate. This is why you hate Kelsier, because he makes me talk about romantics. Ugh, how dare he? It's not he like we know how they were made either, Alex. <laughs> and, then, and then I think Kelsier sort of like took this knowledge and got like a little baby version and went down to the south and taught them about unkeyed medallions and excisors and things like that. <sighs> I am so on board with the idea. This is tangential to what you said, but like so on board with the idea that there is like a founding member of the ghost bloods who is a full ferrochemist that we haven't met mm. yet. Sure. Well, that would be a cool idea. I think that that's really interesting. And I kind of am now questioning a lot of the things that we think we know about the bands where, you know, Maybe he and Spook crack like part of it. You know, they've got a simple answer, which are the medallions that he's going to teach the Southerners to use very quickly. But it doesn't necessarily work. You know, they've got, well, you can give you one power and like, that's cool, but that's not what they wanted to do, you know? And so they just keep working and working on it. And Kelsier can, you know, Kelsier loves to lie. He can lie about having all the powers. He can say, oh, I've made these bands. Maybe it took them a very long time. You know, like I was thinking Spook ruled for 100 years. Maybe he quit after they were done. Or something like that. But I could just see them spending years and years on this and acting, maybe telling the Southerners, like, oh, I've got these magic bands that give me 16 powers, but not really having them for quite some time. I've heard the Siri go around a couple of times to pivot the conversation very slightly, just in terms of the Southerners. I've seen a couple of people question whether Kelsey actually was the Sovereign. Oh, yeah. Because he doesn't have powers, so he mm. couldn't have made the bands. So is that a story that has been perpetuated by Kelsia through the years that he is the sovereign, but the actual person who did this was somebody else? That's just, I mean, that's so weird. That seems like a very Kelsia thing to do, I must but say. Like it's, it, it, it's it does. It's so weird with the copper medallion, but if he can't use medallions, then like, what the hell's even going yeah. on, right? Like, that's... Yeah. But if... What? If there is, say, a full ferrochemist that is helping them, maybe that person is the person that at the time they would have considered the sovereign because that is the person who is actually helping them make these things. And Kelsier kills that person or that person naturally dies. I don't know. And Kelsier just takes this idea and starts applying it to himself instead so that 340 years later, people are now thinking that he is that person that used to be revered when it was a full ferrochemist or, or someone else. Where, where did we find out that Kelsier can't use medallions? It's in, Is the, that epilogue. in the book. It's Is in it the epilogue. in the epilogue? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's weird. Because, yeah, that's a good point. Who yeah. stored the memory <laughs> in <laughs> the, the scars? With the freaking yeah, scars. The memory? scars on the arm. <laughs> like, what? What is going on? You can't use medallions. Wait uh, a second. Uh, yeah, I don't know Are what's. Are sure that's there? It's, Isn't it? It's like Hold very up. hard for me to swallow the idea that like Brandon does a twist reveal that Kelsier is this and then it's also not him. <laughs> you know, it just like, seems that so would weird. Be, like, yeah, that would be a challenge for me. But if I had my whole table rant about the ends of Bands of Mourning and be so <laughs> mad if it was going to be Kelsier and then it turns out it wasn't even Kelsier, <laughs> I'm going to lose my mind. Surprise, oh, it was someone totally my. different. I hate him. But I like, loathe this man. How dare he do this to me? Oh my god. I, I do uh. worry this is a little too twisty. And also, why would they build a temple with like, oh, the guy with the one eye spike? Like, <sighs> that's some good role playing of whoever did this, I guess. It's, ah, okay. But I, how do we some... know that this temple was built at the time that they were making the bands? Oh, that's true. That's fair. Team, he did leave with his priests, whose bodies he ostensibly are up there. But yeah, yeah, right. Um, so real quick, um, and I may be forgetting something, but where d are, are we getting this idea that, that Kelsier can't use the metals? Because I, I see the quote with the Larosium that he says he can't use, but do we know that Kelsier can't use the coins? The medallions? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, well, I mean, right below the Larosium one, there's the there had to be another way. He had hope. Ever he had hope. Hope he could control the metals again. Hope he would be able to soar again. Hope he'd be able to touch the metals. 
he could see in the world all around him. Actually, that's interesting, too. But so, I mean, but like you could use medallions to get the powers, right? Yeah, he could definitely soar without he could just get steel and he's soaring again. Can you can you get elementic powers from medallions? I mean, I mean, presumably and granted, clearly there are more open questions with the bands of mourning. But isn't mm-hmm. the isn't every unsealed metal mind granting an ability? Why can't it grant ever, an elementic one? Have we ever seen the medallion specifically? I don't think we've ever seen them grant allomancy. No. We've seen the Melwish have allomantic, the allomantic grenades. So yeah, like the they power cubes. their airship with like a steel charged grenade, but they don't have someone like tapping into a coin shot power to become a steel burner to do it. Yeah. So which, yeah, I'm thinking well, of the scene from. I'm thinking of the scene from Bands where the gang gets on the little skimmer, right? Mm -hmm. And the way that plays out is a league has wax. So so he has everyone lower their weight, right? Mm -hmm. And then he has wax push against a metal plate onto the big ship, onto the Vilg, to like give them a lift. And, And like wax is trapped, right? And so as he lifts himself up he lifts the ship with him with his allomantic push and then when they get high enough in the air a leak engage it or like or as they're rising he presses like the primer cube onto wax's skin which like mirrors the steel push and then when they get high enough in the air he puts the primer cube in like a specific part of the ship and now that generates um it's pushing the rotors. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then wax can can stop doing the thing. But mm-hmm. all of that requires a coin shot to begin with, or a steel push to begin with. Like it, that ability has to come from somewhere. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's how they operate the lifeboat. So it can't be that they've got six coin shots on this ship, and we know Alamancy is so rare in my mind. Yeah. They have to have some other way to be doing it. Yeah. That is more commonplace. Unless and like, they, the cubes are just charged. And yeah, they, like they might Mar- have. Maracy's lasting as long as it does is presented as a recent development, mm. if I'm yeah, not that's remembering that correctly. Yeah, a recent thing. Uh, yeah. So Uh-oh. I don't think they can have them in storage. Mm. And so mm-hmm. it just seems to me like, and additionally with the primer cube, they have to use primer cubes with Farukami too, at least in my understanding of the ships, because they lower the weight of the ship. So they need someone to charge that with you know, with what a you know, ferrochemical iron, and they plug that into the ship. And, and, the ship and we have lighter. a reference to like someone priming the ship, which we've mm-hmm. always assumed to mean, oh, we are engaging the iron ferrochem the ship. Mm-hmm. Can you just have a coin shot lay down on like a bed of cubes and charge all of them <laughs> at the same time? <laughs> with this is our guy. Probably. Work, but... Q in Q in Bon Jovi with bed of roses, but it's yeah, bed, bed of, of bed cubes. of cubes. Um, bed of cubes. and I mean, I do think we've seen like clearly with the bands, it's possible to tap allomantic powers. Yeah, but right. I, I I don't think we've seen that the the Malwish medallions are able to, or the Southerner medallion. I guess it's all Malwish now, but yeah, it, it is it didn't, it didn't Here. Okay, here will be my at least nail in the coffin of i don't think kelsier can use medallions which okay. is i think if he could he would have the bands of mourning and be using them because <laughs> this is a good point. why, why would he just... leave those sitting there if he could be using them himself i mean they'd go away yeah, eventually they're drained yeah well, they'd go away like, eventually but counterpoint the end of bands of mourning we have a memory coin with somebody with a spike through their eye and scars on their arms, storing a memory in a medallion. It has to be Kelsier, right? Like, it had to be Kelsier. Like, that would be I too weird. my mind if it wasn't Kelsier, because I had okay, a whole rant okay. about it. He's got to be able to use the medallion. <laughs> no, he's got to be. Isn't, isn't there a theory that, like, um, copper compounding of Farukami might be able to duplicate memories? What if you could duplicate oh. the memory from Kelsey and give it to someone else and put it in? Nope. <laughs> when he needs I'm to be able to copper compound to do that, but, yeah, but but he needs the abilities at that point. Yeah, tapping, tapping out. It that's, could steal that's, it out of his mind with a spike. Also, it, 
Isn't there a thing about compounding with medallions that Marsh talks about, or is that just with hemallergy in the set? I, I don't know about that. About hemallergy compounding. I, yeah, I think it's just okay, hemallergy. Okay, okay. There's, there's some weird compounding stuff. Okay, so at least there is an option that, though it is weird that Kelsier is saying, I'd love to soar again, that like, maybe he's just like, permanently <laughs> like append up permanently to that and like maybe that yeah you know that, that could be fine i, I will like, say we'll gaslit ourselves about this kelsey maybe, can't use maybe. medallions thing that was fun. a i stand by this i think he can't use medallions b i do think that it would be fun if he could like i think that'd be better i i don't understand how he's successfully convincing the ghost blood that he has powers <laughs> i don't so yeah. without the ability to use even a solitary power occasionally like are they never like kelsier shoot that guy and he's just like ah oh, i don't feel like it guys sorry <laughs> go get it go get him twin soul it's a weird lie to have made like it is I, it is very kelsier though because he's keeping secrets from the people that are closest to him again and i just i'm like there he goes just Despite the fact that he literally said his organization isn't supposed to keep secrets from each other. Wow. Apparently he's just exempt from that. Well, that's how it's always been. That's how it was with the original crew. Call him out, Marasi. Like, yeah, honestly, that, that, that was really great. Him. It was so good. I love it when people just get Kelsier because he deserves it. And I <laughs> want him to get called out by everyone all the time on his nonsense. Hey, Thank be, you. Be, before, before you return to your original rant. Uh, still on the topic of medallions, uh-huh. we hear something about, and and someone will remember the quote better than me. Something about like the like this is part one, like early in part one, where when they're talking about like trade between the north and the south. Wasn't there something about there not having like any or many alimentic medallions? Wasn't there a bit about that? Oh, no. I believe there was. I thought they said something about there was um access to the basin's alamancers oh i found it oh you found it yep uh okay here we go all right this is from chapter nine of the lost metal i almost said bands of mourning okay let's see (laughs) obviously there were these were malwish trade secret secrets which explained part of it but in interviewing a leak they were able to consistently pick out discrepancies in what he said and what they actually saw why weren't there ferrochemical soldiers in the Malwish army with extremely heightened strength, mental speed, or other dangerous ferrochemical talents? Why weren't there Alamance or medallions? The more they learned, the more certain wax became that there was a secret there, indicating that medallions were not as effective or as versatile as the Malwish would like people to believe. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, if we assume, if we take this at face value, sure, maybe it's possible then God, we are like so deep down this rabbit hole. Yeah. Why don't we just rename it the Bands of Warning? <laughs> <Let's> just <laughs> rename the episode. Okay. I was gonna have a Bands and Southern Magitech episode, but maybe maybe that's this one. We're maybe here. we can cut it, cut it. No, 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 no. We should. Kelsey we should, is we... consequences. <laughs> God. So maybe he can use medallions, but he cannot. But, but there are no alimentic medallions, right? And the bands are their own special, unique thing that for some reason cannot be recreated again, or at least sure. not by him. I mean, that, that at least at least would be logically consistent, so I'm fine with that. But like, how the hell they made the bands ages ago and like... Eight, and like for what all- purpose? Yeah, like that makes the bands way more confusing, in my opinion. But like, at least it's possible that there's weird more mysteries there. Right. So and it does explain secret history, too. It does explain why he hasn't kept them to use them, because if they work like a medallion. Oh, but he can use medallion. Yeah. (laughs) That's how, that's how we've gotten back around yes. yeah i i really want it to all make sense i'm worried that it doesn't i'm, like, I'm, I'm worried also that worried things don't david's in your head argent <laughs> he's getting his theories in there no he's compounding copper and putting it in my head <laughs> yeah we, we don't know what copper compounding does at all uh th- i think that's many rascals is what it does yes <laughs> yes i, I do want to talk about why Kelsier is just lying to the ghost bloods about his powers. Like, what? What is? What is going on with that? Like, why? Just because oh, he wants. Kelsier. 
I, I think that's just like he needs to be the person in power. So he needs to appear powerful. And he thinks the way to do that is by having powers because that is part of how he previously appeared powerful. So he's mm -hmm. pretending that he has them. And also like probably partially because like there is this history of him in the past being a misborn. So people assume he's still a misborn. And if it's a, oh, he doesn't have powers anymore. It's like, oh, we can defeat him because he doesn't have powers anymore. Mm -hmm. He's weak and and frail and we'll just kill him now. And I, I, I think he's just, yeah, I, I think it's PR stunt that he's like, oh, I need to appear like the most powerful person. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. For sure. And I think it's even possible that like, maybe like a ghost blood or two does know, like maybe shy does know, you know, or somebody like that, because clearly I think my belief is that spook definitely is the one who helped Kelsey or get back. And when he came back, I'm pretty sure spook was like, do you have powers? And Kelsey was like, looks like not. So like, mm -hmm. I do think it would have come up over the, over the years. And that, that knowledge is out there with some people at least, but I do think it's a, him wanting to show strength and just like, even if you share it with someone you trust, it can leak, you know? Also, it's possible that if he came back with powers and then they faded away, he would have wanted to, like, keep that secret. Sure. I will say, I have seen people try to say that that comment that we're basing it on, that he makes over the cell phone um, <laughs> about how like oh i wish i could i yeah he he mentioned steel pushing as like it would be a faster way to get back if they weren't over the ocean yep. and i have seen people try to say that they don't think that's kelsier claiming that he himself has steel pushing i don't agree with that i think he is trying to imply that he could himself steel push back if they weren't over the ocean and i mm -hmm. think that's not true but i did just want to throw that out that i have seen people say that he's not actually lying about this and that there's a different way to read that. Objection! Um, we are recording this right after uh, the December spoiler stream that Brandon did. And so, wobs are not transcribed, but one of the ones that appeared was essentially, hey, is Kelsier lying about his powers? It seems like he says he has steel pushing, but then he can't touch the metals. Uh, and, and Brandon says that, oh, yeah, the ghost bloods think he has powers. Uh, he's 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 clearly just lying. And I think that makes sense from a narrative standpoint. Like up to that point, we have not had any confirmation either way. Right. So the first thing we as the audience are getting is, oh, he's using he wants to use steel pushing to get across this ocean, but he can't. So it's like, cool, he has powers. And then you find out later he doesn't have powers. It's like, oh, he's lying. Like, right. I, I thought that was really clear in the text. Yep. 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 Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I'm glad I'm glad we have it cleared up. That's good. It is good because, yeah, you could maybe interpret it differently, I suppose. Like, I can see looking at it in a greater detail, but I think to that depth is not the point of the scene. Cool. So uh, that's a great segue uh, because... God, we could talk about Kelsius powers and what's going on with that for a, re a really, a really, really long time. But let's let's talk. Let's talk about the ghost bloods uh, a bit. And we 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 just saw that Kelsey applies to the ghost bloods. Uh, he keeps secrets from them. Also, let's talk about the Roshar and ghost bloods, right? Because how much influence? D does he like care about the Roshar and Ghost Bloods, like what they're doing? How much does he know? Well, let's talk about that. He cares about all his Ghost Bloods equally. He, they're like his children. That, no, I, I'm I, I, I disagree on every single thing you've said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't that believe that joke. at all. That was a joke. Um, yeah, like, go ahead. He, he cares about Eatil mm. and has sent Eatil to Roshar and said, do whatever you need to do yep. to achieve my objective. That, like that's I, what I think happened, and it's like do whatever you want. But I think that he has the capacity to care about the Rishar and Ghost Bloods. Like we've seen that he's not trying to make this a, a Skadrian only organization. He's willing to accept off worlders. But in my mind, Shalon has been is more or less like a member of the Ghost Bloods by the time she quits. You know, she 
she they keep saying get the tattoo you know and that's their tattoo membership so she's in and never has she heard the words the defense of skadriel you know like that sort of thing and that's so true. i do wonder if there is maybe like an inner and an outer hierarchy and she was kind of knocking on the door of that inner hierarchy which is what marage was offering her towards the end of the book but i could see like some people being on you're like okay you're going to be protecting like if you want to take a step up this is what you're swearing to and if and them having two tiers of membership essentially i wonder going off that if it's to do with a loyalty to kelsier as well because i don't see Maryse as someone who would be loyal to kelsier if he wanted to move up the ranks whereas shallan i think if shallan turned up in skadriel was pulled into their ranks did a couple of missions she could like end up in that inner circle with like Moonlight and Twin Soul because I do think that she would develop this loyalty. And I wonder if that plays a difference. I I will say I think this book has sort of clarified what the command structure is of the Roshar and Ghost Bloods because I think before this it felt a little bit weird of we have Mray's seemingly calling all of the shots and just running the ghost bloods operation on Roshar. And yet we also hear that Yatel is his superior, but she doesn't ever really seem to like give orders or anything. Um, and so I think it makes sense that, you know, Mraze is the head of the Roshar and ghost bloods. He knows what their objectives are on Roshar, you know, investigate cognitive shadows, look into the heralds, find a way to access power reliably in a way that can be brought off world. And Yatil's more just like his supervisor who's reporting back to the main branch. She's more like the liaison between Master Thydekar and Mraze, who's actually running things on the ground and has like operational control over that planet is, is kind of the vibe that I get off of them now. It reminds me almost of Miles and the set in, Book- in, in Alloy of Law. Like Miles had power over people and he was still running something but he was not the head of the organization and there were people above him who could give him orders and just the way you described it i was like wow that reminds me so much of ally of law i think that the thing that makes me most suspicious that this is kind of like a disposable arm of the ghost bloods is that the way yaddle talks about him and like I mean, Yaddle, I guess the way Marais talks about him, he's talking about Kelsier visiting an avatar form, which we know <laughs> is like be non is like nonsense or something. And I think that he does at least have like some level of respect or fear for Kelsier. Like that's at least my interpretation of how he's talking about him in that scene. And so to me, I feel like Kelsier is a is like maybe not a god to these people, but it's something more like that to them, where he is unknowable like you know someone who appears in avatar form only like beneath like they are beneath his notice and yaddle is like okay well i'm a member of his crew and i don't let them in on what all the like kind of the normie stuff but this is how i have chosen to operate here it did feel a bit like Mraze had a bit of like religious fervor like not not exactly but like zeal i guess or like reverence yeah reverence yeah like that that was sort of my impression like he, i think he does feel that way about fight a car but i i don't like his dynamic with kelsier is very different than like shy or twinsels you know uh, dynamic you mm-hmm. definitely get the sense that he's at least a step removed right yeah yeah and i i don't remember if it was on the podcast that we've talked about this or just a conversation that we've had mm-hmm. but the idea that the rosharan ghost bloods are are they really ghost bloods right <laughs> yeah because of like at at no point is Shalan told about the the tenets of the ghost bloods, right? Yeah, yeah, she's told about, you know, not keeping secrets from one another and things like that. But like, number one, protect Skadriel <laughs> is not on the agenda, right? And so I wonder if there is an aspect of Iato is a core member of Kelsier's crew on the same tier as Twinso and well. Not on the same tier as Moonlight, because Moonlight is his apprentice directly. Whatever. Core, core crew member, right? And then Kelsier is like, hey, Yaddo, go and secure me Stormlight from Roshar. And, and do whatever you need to get that done. 
and she goes there and she's like, I am going to start an organization because I cannot do this alone. And so she starts this stuff and it, whether that's sanctioned or not doesn't matter, but the Rosharan branch is effectively reporting to her. And, and yeah, she comes back to Kelsier here and there, but like they don't work for him. They work for her. I, I don't necessarily think this, this means that the Rosharan ghost bloods are like less of ghost bloods. I think this is more like an information security sort of thing. Um, they're they're on a need to know basis. They they, they don't have keep enough, secrets from one another. Well, that's not something <laughs> that we've seen in the Roshar and Ghostblood's branch. That might be something that Kelsier only sort of instructs his core crew to do. Um, but Mraze also says that. Mm-hmm. Does he say we don't keep secrets? Yeah, from that Shalane? like when Shalon yeah. joins officially, then there won't be okay. secrets, right? Yeah. And you're I mean, a race fan. Wow. Dang it. They're, yeah. I'm thinking along the same path as Evgeny, uh, that that is very similar to how I have been considering it. I wonder if they actually would even be considered ghost bloods at all. Like if Marie's turned up at ghost blood headquarters <laughs> in Ellendale or wherever on Scadrial, would Kelsier let him in and treat him as a crew member? Because I'm not actually sure if he would. I kind of wonder whether Itil has set up this organization and said, yeah, you're you're a ghost blood. You've joined our organization. You could call yourself that. And they're actually not. Like, it is a complete lie on her part so that she can get their loyalty to her so that they will work for her. And they think that they're ghost bloods. But if you ask Kelsey, he's like, yeah, no, Eartil is a ghost blood and no one else on Skadriel is a ghost blood. And I, I could see really it being in the middle, too. Like, I don't I think that Yaddle has genuine interest in Mraze. And I think Mraze has a genuine interest in bringing Shalana in. Like, but like they are kind of much more special than we've seen a lot of the other ghost bloods be. Yep. And so I think that Perhaps that so. that it that Marais isn't necessarily like a disposable part of the organization in the same way that someone like that random Iriali guy who's hanging out is, you know? Yeah. And, and that's what I was thinking kind of as well. There seems to be like, it's not a chain of command exactly, but it's a chain of, of master to apprentice, right? We yeah. had Kelsier is Moonlight's master. Uh, when Marisi was offered membership, she was going to apprentice under Twin Soul. Marais, is apprenticed under Iato. Iato is apprenticed under Kelsier, right? So I think if you are in this direct chain, you are okay. But if you are, you know, if Mraze is like, hey, random reality person, like it, it, the Shattered Plains camp of the Ghostbloods had like a bunch of people who were just hanging out there. Like, I don't think all of them go all the way back up to Kelsier. I do want to take this opportunity to say that I do think that that master apprenticeship thing goes all the way back to Kelsey or Finn in the mm. beginning. And that's why the ghost blood is set up in this way is it's deliberate homage to that. And yeah, I agree. I love it. I mean, you could even say like Kelsey or Gemmel. Yeah, oh, but yeah. who cares about Kelsey or Gemmel? Because nobody cares about Kelsey or Gemmel. <laughs> no one cares about Gemmel the story is, of the 11th medal. He is in the worst story that Brandon has ever written. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not I, very I, memorable. I could definitely see Kelsier remembering his uh, relationship with Vin a lot more than having that relationship with yeah. Gemmel. They were mm-hmm. so close. I, I do wonder if Mraze would be considered like a full Ghost Blood going to Ghost Blood HQ because he has a lot of stuff from a lot of different planets and he he's knows a lot of world. stuff. He's been off world. It's possible he's been to Skadriel, but. I don't know. There's a lot of open questions uh, about how this really works. Uh, I do think uh, Evgeny was saying, oh, would Kelsier even know about uh, or like approve of Yaddle making these ghost spots? I think the answer is yes. Uh, I, I think he does want off worlders and I think that's how he does it. But I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, I I strongly actually feel that all of the Rosharan ghost bloods are real ghost bloods. Um, and I think Kelsey would consider them as such. 
I'm actually I'm surprised actually by how strongly I sort of disagree with the idea that they're like a disposable branch, partially because I think for Kelsey or like the sanctity of the crew is a big deal. Um, if you're told that you're I don't think he'd be OK with telling people they're part of the crew and then like hanging them out to dry. Part of what I think the appeal of being a Roshar and ghost blood is, is that I think the plan is when everything goes nuclear on Roshar, the way everybody thinks it's about to, you, you get a way off. You're going to get extracted because you're part of our organization. We'll find another use for you elsewhere. And hey, all of our ghost bloods are going to do whatever, get whatever they can out of Roshar before it gets crumpled by Odium. And then they're going to have another purpose elsewhere. But I don't think anybody's going to get like left behind if everything goes terrible on Roshar necessarily. I think that's an interesting way to look at it. And like, there's other, there's ways to look at it where you, where you can say, Oh, did all of breezes soothers in the final empire know exactly what the whole plan was with Kelsier's crew. And the answer to that question is no, I don't think Kelsier would have called them a member, like a member of his crew. And I think he would have tried to help them, but I don't know what his level of commitment would have been to them. You know, I, but it's possible that, the ghost bloods from Rishar are valuable. I, I just find it really difficult to imagine them being full ghost bloods and not knowing the core mission. Like to me, that's a little bit of a challenge. And I feel like their loyalty is uncertain if they don't know that what their main goal is, is to protect Skadriel. Cause they're, they don't even probably some of them know what that is. So well, it, it is possible that Mraze is very aware and okay with it. Like again, Mraze is holding a lot back from Shalon. So I, I do want to note that. Uh, like, I think that's a delicate thing to bring up to a Rosharan uh, or, or really just anyone off world. It's just like, yeah, protect this totally other place that you've never been to. Like, oh, OK, I'll get right on that. I want to point out um, if I'm remembering the final empire correctly, Kelsier took it really personally when they were about to lose their Scott army as well. Yes. Like, even though those are people who like definitely weren't part of the crew, like they were like part of his plan and he they did like the pewter drag out there and Vin had to like hold him back from going out and getting himself killed in defense of this army that most of them didn't even know them he didn't even you know meet them i think the these sort of like disparate ghost bloods way out in the world who don't know his name who maybe don't even know about skadriel because if they don't need to know about skadriel like I think it's a lot of what's going to be compelling to this ghost blood to get the work done that we need them to do. If Skadriel is a planet they don't care about, then why would they need to know about it in order to sort of get the mission done? It's a good point about the army. Like he, he is. He recruited them himself, though, personally pitched to all of those people in the audiences, That's at least true. many of them. So I think That's that is true. a big part of the loyalty there as well. I, I do think they're ghost bloods, but I do think there's Kelsier's crew and everyone else. <laughs> like, I think those are the two tiers, honestly, in the ghost bloods. Like, you are directly reporting the Kelsier and everyone else is not. Yeah, I don't think he has the same level of protection as like his inner circle of ghost bloods that we see. Like, I think the ones that we see in the Lost Metal are more his inner circle who know him personally who he trusts much more closely but mm -hmm. I, I don't think the difference means that the others are not legitimate ghost bloods i do want to say kind of a little bit of a topic change that i want to point out now that i think a lot of time the argument gets made that okay well kelsey or why are things so bad with the rashar and ghost bloods why are they locking children in cages <laughs> and people say okay well that's the real question yeah. overseeing it and I think that that is a weaselly half answer, because if you set up an organization that you then go and allow to put children in cages because you're not paying attention and saying, oh, don't do that, that is still your responsibility. And I would like to also say that I think that Kelsier, he was always very knowledgeable about his crew. He knew them well. He knew they were better men than they said they were in the case of the final empire. He knows who Yaddle is and he knows what method she's going to employ. And a lot of times somebody, you've got somebody on your team that does the dirty work and it's not twin soul because he's upset about it. And I think it is Yaddle and Delaval, and they're the ones who go do things that Kelsier is, that is kind of on the edgier side of what Kelsier does. And he's not reaching out 
he's looking for alliances, but he's not reaching out to Rashar. He's there to steal a resource and bring it back and make it his. Yeah. So he's, I, I just think that it's possible that a lot of the Rasharans on the team, should they know that that's what the goal is, might be like, wait a minute, why am I doing this for Scadriel? If their loyalty to the Ghost Bolt isn't larger. I keep trying to make a like a like a corporation analogy with the ghost bloods and it's it's not quite fitting together right kelsier is the founder his immediate crew are like the chairman and and some aspects of this analogy hold right if you are you know just an hr person or if you are just like a a developer or a designer in google for example you might not even be aware like where the company wants to go as a company because these decisions are so far above your pay grade that they are either not even communicated to you or they are communicated in a way that you don't understand, right? And some people are in that position, right? Random Ghost Blood member 2147 on Roshar doesn't know the details of what Kelsier is planning, of what Kelsier's immediate like reportees are planning but i don't i don't know if the if the analogy holds beyond i mean may, maybe it holds i think also that we've seen that kelsier is able to draw these lines between groups of people that he likes and groups of people that he doesn't like and he might have this distinction in his mind of these people are skadrian and these people are not skadrian in terms of like putting children in cages it's like okay this is two people removed from him for people that are not his people they're on a different planet he does not care about them they're not who he's trying to save so he doesn't actually care that much about what's happening there because it it doesn't affect him it doesn't affect like what he's currently doing it really is removed from him and he does have this ability to put people into black and white camps of I care about you or I don't care about you. I think that's very believable for Kelsier. And uh, I, I really think this will eventually bite him in the butt. Like, hey, maybe you shouldn't have treated the Rosharns uh, quite so badly. That maybe was not the best idea. I yeah, I definitely think um because I've, I've heard people sort of have that like, oh, if Kelsier knew what was going on in the Rashar and Ghost Bloods, he'd never approve. And I'm like, I don't agree. Um, I think in addition to sort of the points that Jess made, which are very, very true. I, I also think like coming back to this idea that a lot of the rest of the Cosmere seems to see Rashar as doomed, um, you know race is bound and we care not for his prison like <laughs> yeah yeah it sucks to be over there with odium but what are you, what are we going to do about it and i really think a lot of the sort of ghost bloods operation on roshar is like grab whatever you can before this place isn't there anymore and therefore like what yeah it sucks that you're putting a teenager in a cage but if that teenager is gonna like die in a desolation soon after anyway are you really that fussed or do we need to get the job done here you know, it's very much how can we use the desolation to our advantage? And Shalon's like horrified by that sort of phrasing of like, we're not trying to stop the desolation. It's like, no, I don't think so. I think everybody else has kind of written off Roshar as, as lost. Um, so, Evidently yeah. it didn't go great if it's Roshar is inaccessible. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Yetel's job is to watch what Murray's does let him conduct the operations the way that he thinks is best because clearly he has a level of trust there but she's meant to step in i think if he does anything that like kelsier wouldn't want him to do and i don't think she's gonna step in on a lot of stuff because like it's just roshar and sorry they're all doomed anyway probably and also kelsier really wants these answers off of roshar like break a few eggs sort of a thing we mm. know he's willing to do that if the stakes are high enough if it's important enough that he finds out about the heralds that he finds a way to get stormlight off of roshar i think they might have been given a little more rain than he might have done being messy like that close to home i disagree oh okay and, and it's it's always it's always difficult for me to like communicate why i think people have the wrong idea about Kelsier 
And one aspect of it is that he's often looked at in a very, very extreme light. He will either condone everything or he will condemn everything. And I, I feel confident in saying that if he is presented with like at the, in his epilogue, he comes back to HQ and there is a report on his desk and is like, Lord Thydekar, I, I am Mraze and uh, tomorrow I'm going to go and like kidnap a teenager for this plan that I have that has to do with like this fused lady, yada, yada, yada. Like this specific action, I don't think will fly with Kelsier. And part of that is just intuition of what I think of, of his personality. Part of it is, yeah, we keep joking about making an omelet and, and breaking a few skulls. But the other part of that like train of thought is that like Kelsier explicitly says, oh, innocent people should not be subjected to this. Like, yes, there are innocent people should not be subject to this. Sometimes to make an omelet, you have to break a few skulls. There are some people who are explicitly opposite of innocent. And yes, you can you can draw the line of which people are OK to be sacrificed in a number of different ways. But like in the context of that scene, he's like, oh, there are people who are evil. and they are good for nothing other than using their spiritual DNA or whatever. So like, yes, it's murder, but it's not unwanton, careless, random murder. And so like, Kelsier, I strongly believe, has a morality. It's, it's a little bit gray, but it's definitely there. And so like, it, it, and, and this is not even going to the fact that I think Lyft is going to remind them of Vin in some ways, and his, so he's going to be a big no-no of the whole thing. The concept of we don't do bad things to innocent people and probably children, I would wager, is going to be strong in his mind. And so this specific action, he's either not aware of or he finds out after the fact. Is like I, I feel strongly about that. I would say that I don't think that Kelsier has any desire to hurt innocents, but I don't think they factor into his decision making over his goals. I don't think that that ever comes up. And one of the reasons I say that is because I think those prisoners that Marasi and the set encountered in the tunnels are a pretty good example of that, where those were innocent people that they had the capacity to help in Twin Souls, who I think is among the most soft hearted of the Ghostbloods, didn't even really think about helping them. Like, that's not what they do. They are there about their goals. And if they are and if they can help someone in accomplishing their goals, they're down. But Lyft that Lyft could have been in that room and they would have left her there. They're not worried about about bystanders. They're worried about accomplishing what they need to accomplish. And they're not trying to inflict undue harm, but they're not going to risk stopping the bomb for these people. They don't have that side of it to them. Like they're, they're more about the goal. Oh, I was also thinking that, like, I would be very surprised if Kelsey had heard about anything that's happening on Roshar before the fact, because I don't think Eartil's going to him for permission to do things. So, mm. like, if he's hearing about the stuff with Lyft, then he's probably hearing it from Eartil, who will be painting it in a way of, we had a prisoner who was a Radiant, and if it, like, maybe it comes up that, yeah, she was a child, that's like four or five, if not further down the list of things that he has been told to the point that like it doesn't matter, I don't think, in that case. Like he's not thinking, oh, this is a child. He's thinking, oh, this is an enemy radiant that was in our way, who was trying to stop us doing X thing, and we had to capture her to get this information. And also she was a child. And that's like buried down at that point because that's how the information would be ferried back to him. Like he's not finding out straight away. It's like, oh, we captured this child and did these things because yeah, that sounds terrible. And I, I, I think they are aware of 
the way that they present information. But yeah, I I think everything happening at Roshar is getting to him second, like after the fact from mm. someone in the organization. So there is always a bias in the way it is being presented. Yeah. But at the same time, if Eertil did go to him, I was like, I have to do some things that might involve like capturing some radiants who are getting in our way and asked like can we do that i don't think he would say no with this i agree mm -hmm. uh it's a matter of how much information is getting back to him, right and but 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 that part of the conversation rarely happens right the the, the conversation that we meme about is oh this you know about that the, they are putting children in cages i'm like no i don't know this. i don't know if etl would even mention the child aspect it's just like it's a very clinical Please. report uh and maybe she does sort of keep some of the unsavory stuff that she does away from kelsier maybe he she <laughs> just does not tell him it's like ah oh, i'm doing the mission kelsier cares about the mission kelsier wouldn't like these things he doesn't need to know about that like i'm accomplishing the mission so what's the problem yeah, yeah I think. she could be like that I think there's also the fact that, um, like, I think what happened to Lyft was not that bad, <laughs> which like, <laughs> okay, clip that, she was, clip that. She was, I know, I know. <laughs> but like in the scale of atrocities that have happened throughout the Cosmere, one child briefly in a cage and then given to enemies to be put in a jail cell is not the uh, not the worst thing it's not good i'm not saying it's good okay. but in terms of like this is a terrible atrocity that kelsier would be i will say my rebuttal to your original point and i'm gonna be a little thorough about this i want to read the passage where that omelet quote comes from because i think it's okay. incredibly telling actually and this i think is one of the like clearest Kelsier moments in a way that like this is what I take issue with with him. Sazed starts out and I'm I'm going to point out the wab that we got during the last stream that Kelsier is like the set or a consequence of what Kelsier yeah. of something that Kelsier had done. I think this really recolors this quote in particular because now we know that Kelsey one of Kelsier's goals is reintroducing allomancy and metal arts into the Skadrian population and I think he may have been maybe a little more directly responsible for some of the really really it, I think some of the things he set in motion led to some of the worst things that the set was doing and I think that's actually what Sezed is talking about here when he addresses him where he says do you so you agree with the set Sezed said and their monstrous undertakings in the name of creating Metalborn. Did he? It was difficult to say. Kelsier doesn't say that he disagrees with them. He's like, hmm, sometimes to make an omelet, you had to break a few skulls. He didn't like what the set had done to innocent people and would never condone such actions. But if hemallergy was demanded, there was always someone around who was the strict opposite of innocent. Sezed continues, you don't know where the set's experiments could have led, Sezed said. Even the simple act of trying to breed Alamancers, it leads to darkness, Kel. Trying to create perfect people through forced breeding, you don't have to be terrorists to find that idea nauseating. <clears throat> and again, Kelsier doesn't agree with him. Kelsier pushes back. Perhaps Ruin and Preservation should have thought about that before giving genetically derived powers to only part of the population. I think... I think the set took it too far, but I think Kelsier might have been responsible for this idea of like allomantically breeding the population. And I think Sezet's calling him out over that. I think that might be where the set came from. And just like those moments are so very, very telling. And that's the part of Kelsier that I'm just like, I can never be behind. I can't. I, it is remarkable how... <laughs> how differently we read this. I'm sure. Uh -huh. The way I read it, Kelsier, in my opinion, is he's, he's not pushing back against Sezed's comment about eugenics. He is essentially pushing back against the system. He's saying, 
we live in a faulty world where access to magic is limited to a few select people with the right genes. We need magic. Otherwise, we're going to get crushed under the heel of history. I'm not saying we should selectively breed the magic into people. I'm saying we need magic. And the way the system was set up, he's saying we need a different way to introduce this magic. Like, I, he's not necessarily agreeing with the forced breeding idea. He's saying we need a way to accomplish the same thing. And he's, he's making no comment on, on what that way is, other than later on talk about, hey, we need, like, he, he just keeps on, on, on saying, we need metal, we need proper metal born, right? The other thing you wanted, you, you were commenting on was like whether, like how difficult it was for him to, to determine whether he agrees with the set. And the way I read that is, I read that passage as a commentary on hemolurgy and like the unsavory nature of hemolurgy itself which dates all the way back to like, hey, Spook, we're going we're gonna to do some blood magic. <laughs> um, which I objected and- to from the start. I will have the record <laughs> state. Well, too clearly, bad. clearly he agreed. Um, and, and not so much, like, I, I think it's difficult for him to, to decide whether he agrees with the set because he disagrees with their like with how far they go but he's okay with using him like one of the things that the set does is they they steal like five percent of a person's soul or whatever and as far as we can tell that has no real impact or, or no measurable impact on the human themselves like they're not even they don't even go down to like a drab level they lose less than a breath right which if it was drop level, maybe we'd have a different conversation, but it doesn't even seem to be that. And so I think that Kelsier would be okay with. Just leeching a little bit of soul from individuals so that they are not negatively impact, I, I think that he'd be okay with. And so with that aspect of the set, he's going to agree with. The forced breeding is the part that's like, yeah, no, that's no. Uh, it's the difference between like he agrees with the end goal like they both want more metal born in the world he just doesn't agree with the method so does he agree with the set it's kind of hard to say because he does but he doesn't it, it like it's not across the board but in a way he does agree with the set just not how they're doing it yeah i definitely just read this as like Sezed straight up asking him, like, the set was doing horrible, horrible things. Monstrous undertakings is what was on the table. And he just straight up says, do you agree? And Kelsier doesn't say no. I just, he doesn't. Um, I mean, I do think Sezed is calling him out on that. Like, I think yeah, that's, that sure. part is exactly what's happening, right? Yeah. I, I oh, think I, we've I always remember. known that, real quick, I think oh, we've always known that Kelsier was okay with heme allergy, and I don't like that about him. But I, I think this lower part about even the simple act of trying to breed Alamancers, that sort of reads to me as Sezed calling out something Kelsier attempted. And I would love to ask Brandon to like clarify this. Like, was Kelsier the one who came up with this idea? And then, you know, the dominoes fell and eventually we got the set who did it in this horrible way. But yeah, when we come back to sort of the original question, like kid in a cage, he just got asked right out about, do you disagree with the people who made hemallergic monstrosities and kept a bunch of captives in, in uh, caverns? And he like did not say no. Gosh. Kid in a cage for a few days? Hmm. I don't think he'd have a problem, actually. Yeah, that's, but- that's, my, that's my final take there. Uh, this is a minor point, but if you're talking about early attempts to breed Alamancers, you have to wonder if the last li- living Mistborn, who we know had a ton of children, was really trying for that and had like a serious con, like, you know, he had serious contact with Kelsier. So I could definitely see that of being more than spook, just wanting to have a lot of pallbearers at his funeral or whatever. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, like I, that. Is, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. I, I remember the other thing I was going to bring up. Um, the idea that Kelsier's actions led to the set, um, inadvertently resulted in the set's creation, came from the stream, yada, yada. The context that Brendan gave there was that, oh, Kelsier was doing things behind the scenes. There were people who noticed that there were things happening behind the scenes. And then Brendan went into talking about them effectively learning about ancient gods, which I assume he's referring to. Um, Trilogy. Uh, yes, but also preservation and, and ruin, mm -hmm. like all of that stuff, right? Well, and, those are in the words of founding. Everybody knows about those on Skatrio. So are the others of, of say yeah. sets. Okay, okay. Continue. Sorry. But it, so, so they found out that there were real entities behind these things and they were looking into them and trying to contact them. And one of these autonomy contacted them back, right? And that's, that's how the whole started. So the foundation of the set was not a consequence of Kelsier exploring hemolurgy or breeding programs or anything of that nature. It was him looking into the wider Cosmere and some people noticing that there is a wider Cosmere and then kind of following in his, in his footsteps in a way. I like David's idea of Kelsier and Spook are like, okay, we need more people with powers. You're a misborn. <laughs> We're going to use you to have some kids to try and get more people with powers. Step one. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to create a breeding program because we know firsthand, like from interacting with Seize and the other terrorists, like how bad that can be and like and just how horrifying it is. So we're going to try and do it in a good way. And people took that and created a breeding program. <laughs> It, it it's very plausible it's very plausible i don't know i i feel like the way this exchange happens that say Zed's sort of like okay let's just talk about breeding alamancers and kelsier doesn't even like hesitate on that one he pushes back and defends the idea um i i think it was his i i think it, it was his and i would love to ask brandon to be sure um but that's that's my takeaway is like the idea of breeding alamancers uh intentionally was Kelsier's idea and he's not ashamed of it and he yeah. like is wibbly wobbly about like oh yeah the set kind of way took it way too far um even though I guess Hebelurgy is okay but yeah that's that's my read at least it's like generally I'm pretty okay with kind of accepting it's like look I really like Kelsier as a person and he does terrible things and I'll just accept that he does terrible things <laughs> He was a really good friend of CZ, like a really good friend and like was very well aware of what the terrorist breeding program was and what it had done and just like how much of an effect it had on people. And I just find it, I find it hard to believe that he would try and create a similar thing, even if it's trying to achieve one of his goals if it if it's just kind of set up the same way like as the original one but reversed instead of trying to stop something you just set it up to create something just i i, I don't know his friendship with Caesar makes me think that he wouldn't try and do something so blatantly like middle finger to you type thing because that's kind of how it feels Whereas, like, I, I could totally see him be like, okay, we don't want to do this, but can we do something like this? And, like, trying in good faith to do something else that just ends up being the same thing. I mean, I, I think that's why Seisad mentions the terrorist breeding programs here. I think it's meant to be a guilt card, and it doesn't work. And that says a lot. So, their, yeah. their, their relationship is so crunchy uh and we, we it's talked, pretty crunchy i we we talked about it on uh the the harmony episode can i can i tell you guys my 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 kelsey or harmony idea i don't know if alex has heard this so this this will be good for her mm, interesting okay kelsey say zed's gonna become discord boom 
Kelsier okay. is going to maybe originally like that Sezed is acting and, <laughs> you know, ruining and preserving uh, not no more mm-hmm. stability. Let's get let's get stuff done. <laughs> then he realizes that it's like, oh, no, this is actually a big problem. And he needs to kill. Kelsier needs to personally kill Sezed for the good of Skadriel. Whoa. Uh, that's that's what he's going to do. And we're going to see it in Kelsier's POV in era three. Him needing to like, I'm sorry, old friend. Dead. <laughs> Boom. Just- I have heard this theory a lot, uh, which I'm so shocked <laughs> Why? <to> everybody. <laughs> I have not heard quite to that extent this theory. A lot of those middle bits are not things you have mentioned to me before. Oh, I haven't because mentioned I... the autonomy bit either. There's, there's <laughs> a whole aspect that we have to talk about. That's that, This is all brand new, baby. <laughs> well, the thought that I had after Eric first brought this up and talking to other people, I think on the Ghost Bloods episode, was that like Kelsey once says it to do stuff. It's kind of implied that like Harmony is trapped and not able to do things because mm-hmm. Harmony is trying to hold the ballads, whereas Discord would be something else, presumably doing a lot of things in some manner that we don't quite know. And that actually seems more like what Kelsia wants is like, just do something, do something to help do something at all, because doing nothing is worse than doing anything. But you hadn't mentioned the middle part of like, and then Kelsey realizes that this is not actually helpful. And now we have to like stop the villain. That is that is discord. So I I, I do really like that. I like that addition. Kelsier's whole thing is going to be, oh, the things I've tried to do, unintended consequences that have rippled out. Like I just see this whole like, hey, get the we're going to be imperialist and try and take this important resource from Roshar. What could go wrong? Eh, they're not Skadrians. It'll be fine. It's like eventually not fine. Um, and just things like and say said, you got to do things. <sighs> say said turns into discord does things. It's like, ah, mm, maybe old say said had a point. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> It'll be interesting as well, because I, I've definitely seen people push back against the idea of Caesar turning into Discord and Caesar's becoming this character that people don't like. Because Caesar was a protagonist, he was the good guy, and now he's turning into the bad guy, and people don't like that. So I am kind of curious to see where Brandon takes us because I really like the idea of Kelsier and Caesar both being the protagonists from Era 1, shove them into, say, Era 3, and it eventually turns out that there is this tragic thing where one of them has to kill the other and everyone is sad and just like stabs to the heart and things like that. And I think there's going to be a proportion of readers who will hate it because you're taking characters that people loved, you're turning them into bad guys, you're making them bad people. And like, that's not what people want from their favorite characters. They want to like these people. They don't want these people to be unlikable. So it would just be interesting to see how that could play out. And I kind of think that's where this is going. That's what I kind of like about it. But yeah, I, I've suffer. seen a lot of people like be upset about Caesar in particular with Era 2. It's very live long enough to see yourself become the villain. That's yes. Kelsier in a nutshell, right? <laughs> very Harvey Dan. Yeah. yeah. And I, I will say before we get too far away from it, I just, I can't resist one last little shot over the bow about Alimantic breeding programs. <laughs> okay. Because you know who else had the brilliant idea to go and take a strong Alimantic bloodline and produce a lot of children in hopes of getting a bunch of Alimancers? It was Straff Venture. And therefore... Kelsier's wrong. Nice. This is a terrible idea. Nice. There you go. Nice. This is not like this is an emotional appeal, but I just I can't let it go. So okay. there you go. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's my I, moment. We can continue talking about Discord now. I, I've been accumulating comments as as the conversation goes <laughs> okay. on. So okay. I I need to go at some point. No. Um, yeah. I know. Damn um, comments is just stacking it <laughs> until it bursts. I know. I know. I know. What a mega. One soda. one one small thing that. I noticed uh, when I was rereading the epilogue earlier 
was that Kelsier thinks of Harmony's actions or Seizet's actions. Like, Seizet has been acting erratically lately, which I didn't register much at, at a first read. Like, we know Seizet has been weird, but in the context of a being who doesn't act much, and then in the context of, oh, what if this being, like, there's two ways to, to have a, a zero sum game, right? It's to be at zero or to have like, I mean, it's more than two ways, right? But another way is to have a large positive and a large negative that cancel out. Large ruin, right? large preservation. And so in the context of that, acting erratically, oscillating or spiraling between the two is interesting, right? So that's comment the first. Comment the second. Earlier in the episode, way, way, way earlier. I don't even remember who drew the parallel between Kelsier and the Lord Ruler. And, and, and I knew of, of Eric's theory. And I'm like, I'm going to wait until that comes up. <laughs> because this is another parallel. This Rashek killed Alendi, who was oh, admittedly not ooh, his friend. Ooh. But there is a parallel there of, oh, I am going to, I will do the greater good. And 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 like do do these things right? It's that that's the Kelsier thing for the greater good, right? Like he yep. that that's can, what he can does. Can I point out? They're both killing the hero of ages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's yeah. you're, you're okay. not wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the thing about like but, the Discord word appearing in Era One. On yeah, a and they shall chapter. love him for it. Yeah, they yeah, shall yeah, name yeah, him Discord. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Love him for it. Uh, yeah. but. <laughs> So I'm one of the people who who don't like the idea of like the like Harmony essentially becoming the villain or says that becoming right. And it, uh, part of that reason is purely, hey, this was a character I loved. I don't want to I don't want to see him go that way. I don't want to see him become the villain. The other half of that is if Harmony becomes discord, like and becomes discord in like a villain capacity because i think you can have like a middle ground discord where it's like closer to kelsier where discord is doing things and they they seem evil but they serve the greater good or vice versa agent of chaos sure yeah if this were to happen if harmony became discord in a villainous capacity this would be something that is happening to the character it's not something that is going to be the result of, of the character's actions. Yes, says it ascended to, to harmony, right? But like becoming discord was never part of the deal. And we haven't seen enough of like says own actions to go, oh, these actions are going to lead them down a slippery slope or a dark path, whatever. And, and, turn them into the villain from where we stand if harmony became discord and discord was villainous it would be like the hand of the author going oh your or one of your favorite characters is now evil because i need that character to be evil for story purposes Mm -hmm. and that will feel really crummy i could see brandon spinning it as a look at what happens when you take up a shot's power look at how that shot can change you Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that is related to what I was going to say, which is so far, you know, the timescales have been short, but we haven't seen much that makes him not feel like our old pal says it. And Brandon gave the shards the concept of you are going to be taken and twisted by this intent, regardless of whether you want to or not, for a reason, because he wants to explore it. And what better way to explore it than by watching one of our favorite characters undergo it? And that's like, have, have we ever seen anything like that? So far, not really. And I think this is a really great opportunity to see it. I would push back on needing Discord to be the villain. I think if Brandon wants to, he could write it in a way that Discord and Kelsey are. Because I feel like in my head, that's kind of... Trell is like the third party or autonomy or whatever. I don't really know what the conflict's going to be. But like their conflict can doesn't have to be like one is good and one is evil. It can be something more interesting than that. And... And I just don't think it I don't think it would feel hand of the authority to me. This is something that is well established and has been like, I don't know, even talking about it since the first series. So I just don't I don't really see anybody saying, oh, it's the hand of the author when we've been 
waiting for it for books and books. And if it's more nuanced, if it's more, you know, two characters like doing their best to accomplish what they think is the best for the, the, their people or the planet or whatever, that's okay with me. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I, I, I guess the thing that I'm pushing back is, oh, Kelsier feels like he needs to kill his old friend. Because that, like, if it gets that far, that, that, that's, that seems like too far. Uh, see, I feel like he can want to kill Seize and still there can be an argument that he that Seize is not the bad guy. I think Discord could be Brandon is always good at making interesting pitches on things that seem to be evil, seem more necessary than they actually are. And I could see Discord being pitched in a similar way. And I think thematically, when you're talking about a setting that I think we're all kind of landing on as being Cold War like Discord is the theme of that series, too. It is Discord between these two factions that are existing on this planet and so resolving that conflict and figuring all that out can be really thematically appropriate and work well with what's going on with the shard it could also be that cz is not so far gone in it only being a couple of hundred years of holding the shards that he's maybe still able to separate himself a little bit from the power and he realizes what's happening and it's more of a not like a mutual destruction, but like a, I am, I'm losing it. I'm losing the plot and like I am causing chaos. I'm causing damage and danger to people. And I am not the person who should be holding this shot. I, I like, I do not have the capabilities to do this. And I could see it be like this really tragic thing where like CZ is po- similar to like the spren were a part of it type thing. It's like CZ is part of the idea behind like okay we need to stop you somehow like i i can i can see a lot of ways to do it without just making say to the villain and i don't actually know if i think he would ever just be straight out the villain and bad for for all the reasons that you said and you don't I, just want to copy era one right with oh yeah. the evil god gotta kill him you know yeah i i think part of what we've perhaps seen actually um I think maybe becoming Discord is the right choice. Um, going going back to what you said, Evgeny, about sort of you can have a net zero by doing nothing or you can have a net zero by swinging wildly in one way and wildly in the other way. I think a lot of the sort of theme for Harmony throughout Era 2 has been that he needs more agency. He can't act Wax is constantly frustrated that Harmony can't do more. Kelsier's frustrated that Harmony can't do more. He's under siege from another shard who nearly sets a nuke off in the middle of his planet and does a hostile takeover with an, uh, with an avatar. And I think if I'm Harmony, I'm thinking maybe they're right and I need to be able to act. And if that means acting in strongly preserving ways and acting in strongly ruinous ways at the same time, I think he might feel like he needs to at least try that method for a little while because they are under such threat from the rest of the Cosmere. So all, all of this is true. And I'm very interested to see how Brandon does Discord. I, I definitely think that we're going to see Sazed and Kelsier's philosophical distinctions be at yeah. conflict. And I think yeah. mm-hmm. having that philosophical conflict mm-hmm. be sort of the soul of it, where it's like, well, they like I think Kelsier does have some points in the epilogue. It's like, I mean, we do need powers, but Sazed has points that's like, hey, this is actually really dark. You you cannot do this. Like that, that is going to lead to consequences. And seeing the ramifications of those and the ramifications of these kind of mythological figures like go head to head it's like yeah it's not gonna go well and maybe we're gonna have some points of view that are pro harmony or pro harmony or whatever status says that is and others that are like ghost bloods and pro kelsier uh and so that could be an interesting way to do it where it's like the evil god isn't he's not evil like he's 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 making a change we're, we're making a change to enact to do better right i don't know like there, there's a there's a lot of interesting ways to do it i just had an interesting thought about 
bringing us back a little bit more toward Kelsier. Uh huh. Um, the the lie that Harmony has uh-huh. about there not being Larasium. Mm-hmm. And the more I think about it, I'm like, why does he need? Why does he feel the need to lie to Kelsier about that? One, Harmony's not the only person who knows about Larasium. Waxilium does. So that's out there. But also, if Harmony knows that Kelsier's goal is to get more Metalborn, and he's very concerned about Kelsier taking sort of dark roots to try to get there, why would he not tell him that there's sort of a natural, non-dark, non-alimantic breeding or hemallergy alternative to reintroduce Metalborn powers into the sort of population does this mean that harmony is not intending to use the lorasium to do that and knows that kelsier would be upset that he has a different purpose for the lorasium than what kelsier would want to do it and if so what else would you use lorasium for if not introducing metalborn powers back into the population that's there's kind of an interesting question there that i hadn't put together before wonder if it's a a question of scale. Like if they have Lorassium, like that tends to make you stronger, right? As a misborn, even if you've only got a little bit compared to other people in the population. And if Kelsey has that, it's kind of similar to what the Lord Ruler did, where he was able to control who was loyal to him and what happened in society by giving out these beads. And I do wonder if Caesar does look at Kelsia and go, are you the next Roshek? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think he trusts them with the pow- with that sort of power at all. And, and I don't think he's necessarily intending to make Lorasium himself. I think he would just like nobody to know about this. And he thinks Wax has got a pretty good sense of discretion and the Ghostbloods are not looking at him. So he's probably a pretty safe place to to know about the Lorasium thing. He's not going to kill him after all he's done for him. So this is kind of the best situation he could be in. But yeah, I think it's, it is just straightforwardly that Harmony's not interested in Alamancy being around in that sort of thing. Like we, he had, he made spook a Mistborn, but he didn't make a bunch of other Mistborn. If he wanted the metallic arts to have continued into this era, he could have done that back when he had agency and he didn't want to do that. He chose to let them exist in this lower level. And I think he's just more comfortable yeah. with it. I have had a thought about my own question and I'm going to acknowledge that there's a rabbit hole here and I just want to quickly briefly step over it real okay, quick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> in that I think it could also be about the ATM that's produced. If we have this like sort of weird ATM retcon that we haven't seen anyone burn real ATM and all of it has been a uh, um, sort of alloy and the idea that like harmony whenever ATM is being produced is like making sure it gets alloyized the right way before it's released. It could be more about protecting pure ATM that is the result of this reaction from the population rather than the lorasium. So he could be like trying to subtly like slip lorasium to a couple of people and just like I'm accomplishing Kelsier's goal. He doesn't need to know that I'm doing it, but we're trying to work on the problem. I just don't trust him to actually be doing these reactions himself. I think Brandon did confirm in the stream that what's being produced is pure ATM yeah. and it would need to again be re-alloyed yeah. despite what? the myriad problems that what? are introduced by said retcon. Oh yep. boy. Oh no. Yep. <laughs> And oh, that's no. the rabbit hole we're stepping over. That's that yeah. that, that will be, we will do a WAB episode. We will do yep. a WAB episode. I don't know when with Secret Project 1 in January. Sometime. Maybe. I wonder if there's also a connection back to the trauma of Era 1, where Adium and Lorassium are so intertwined with what happened during the Final Empire and what they went through, that now that they're starting to be produced again. Caesar doesn't want to bring this up because that is too much of a connection to what happened before. And what if it happens again because these things are now available? That's possible, yeah. Trauma! Trauma! <laughs> Yay! The core can, of the Cosmere. Can, can I steer to my other crack theory connected with my other Kelsier crack theory? Because this is, this is really good. Okay. So Grace couldn't be on this episode and she had a great thought that 
you know, Kelsier and, and Bavadin would be a really good ship because Kelsier is, in a lot of respects, very autonomous and I think would be even, you know, you know how much Bavadin liked wax. Kelsier is that to a way, to another level, right? Uh, where the Brandon says autonomy is a fan of Kelsier. Autonomy is a fan. Okay. All right. So that triggered a chain reaction of thoughts in my brain. Kelsier will become autonomy. Boom. All right. So, I mean, uh, how could we change uh, era three? Era three autonomy is going to be important and, and Trell, but we got to make it different from era two. So we're going to make it different in that Kelsier is is going to either kill Bobadin or kill an avatar and take that mantle of power. Now, I know what you're going to say. He would never be subordinate to Bobadin. That's true. But I could see him in a desperate situation that this is the way that he can stop an avatar uh, coming in. And would would he be a match for autonomy power? I think yes. And I think he might think that this is a way like as an avatar, he can influence and attack the rest of autonomy's avatars to like get off schedule. Also, he has to have more D effect power if he wants to kill Seized. So, you know, that works out. <laughs> so you got to do that first, right? How, how else are you going to kill a shark? Yeah, yeah. You power? know, you know, easy, easy. You, nailed it. you can rent Nightblood. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rent, rent Nightblood. Rent Nightblood. Get, get him over here. But, but realistically, I actually maybe maybe not an era three. But I think Kelsier could legit take up autonomy as a shard, and that would actually be a really good match for him. I think Kelsier's uh, remarkably similar to Bavadin from what we've seen, um, and I think that says a lot. So. But I mean, down to the whole like setting up different groups of people to worship yeah, different. He's got the cults people. thing. We're we're set. We seed yep. religions. Kelsey, he's he's got it. And <laughs> the whole like he only visits Roshar in avatar form, which I immediately <laughs> called was complete BS. And I'm so glad that Brandon backed me up on that because I was like, I know Kelsey doesn't actually have avatars. This is such no. a nonsense. No. And I wonder almost if like. At some point, Kelsier found out about Autonomy's modus operandi and saw that it was really similar to his own. He's like, well, I'm just going to keep doing it because it's probably really annoying to Babadin. <laughs> and that's the kind of person that he is. Which, yeah, is kind of a good uh, vibe for a ship. I, I concur, Grace. I'm, yeah, I'm down with that's that. That's good. I think the main reason I disagree with this is because I think Bavadin specifically is an end game problem. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Well, maybe an era four, you know, this time. Oh yeah, I don't think Kelsier is going to become autonomy. Um, I think they're rivals. Mm. Mm. I disagree and, with you on that. I'm with Argent on this. Um, and the other thing, which frustratingly can go either way when it comes to evidence, is uh, from his epilogue, like he's describing the way he sees the world. His steel sight gives him one vision and his normal eye gives him another and he says one eye of the gods one eye of the common man as he had always tried to see the world and obviously you can read this as foreshadowing for divinity but you can also read this and i think i prefer this way you can read it as kelsier his role in the grand cosmere saga is to to be the common man to be the person who is just a mortal, but has a lot of knowledge and a lot of power and is influencing, right? Because one of the uh, kind of meta narrative aspects of the Cosmere is one of the themes of the Cosmere is what happens when normal people become gods or gain divine powers. Like Brandon has said that we see this throughout the Cosmere, right? I think Kelsier represents the other half of that. And his intention is to represent the other half of that what happens to people who are put on this grand stage with with gods and like how do they act how do they 
react. And so I, I think him ascending would undermine that. I could see it. I, I wouldn't rule it out. I am wary of too many endgame characters ending up as shards because I don't know how that works. I, you know, I think they could end up getting like sometimes the ending of series are really weird. But, you know, like <laughs> if it's if it's like one big shard fight, like I'm like, I don't know about that. And I don't think Brandon would go with that. But I think when you make characters into shards, it does introduce a lot of complications, as we've seen with both Cezade and our good friend uh, Teravodium. So I feel like it's possible, but that like it's in a pool of like maybe four or five ascensions max that we're going to see that are left. So it becomes a question of if, is Brandon going to do that or is he going to use it for somebody else? I have realized it's kind of interesting, actually, that Kelsier is able to see this way, despite the fact that we now know he doesn't have steel or iron. I was going to say mm-hmm. that. That's so weird. <laughs> this is like the third time we've that's, done that's, that. This no, podcast. Alex, that is so weird because there's a really <laughs> yes. old wob that said anyone can anyone with steel and iron can learn to see like an inquisitor. I thought yeah. this was a steel or iron like savant thing like i think if you just burn it literally all the time you could see like I this think that was what we we thought it's interesting and yeah, i think we weird. would say like the shards are different like it's clearly the shards are not like coin shots or yeah, yeah, yeah of course of course all of that but it's it's intriguing that kelsier is doing this more from like the shard angle than from like a yeah. misting savant or misborn yeah. savant angle yeah this he's saying like this is how shards vision. see yeah yeah. When he's able to do this clearly without any of those powers. Mm-hmm. I wonder, though, if that's from his very brief time holding preservation and mm. if that's his <laughs> memory of what it's like to see as a shard, because he talks a lot about all the connections in secret history yeah. and like how much there is on the metals and things like that. So. Mm-hmm. He is a sliver. I my thought was more that uh, it's a cognitive shadow thing that he's you know he's kind of existing on a different plane a little bit in some parts and that's showing up for him. And the point where his soul is literally being stapled into his body, essentially, it's where he's viewing it from. So I could see it being something else, but that was my read was mm-hmm. oh, it's cognitive shadow weirdness. Interesting idea. Yeah. But this is yeah. not how he saw, like, he was able to see the physical realm in secret history, and he saw it normally. I mean, like, what he is now. I'm not saying, like, I, I think that the process that created him that put a cognitive shadow in a physical body have led to this. Not that he needs to. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, shadow. yeah. I, I agree with that, yeah. I think this is a consequence of his specific circumstances. I really like the idea that um, Argent brought up of Kelsier remaining like the common man amongst all of the different shards. And I could totally see Kelsier out of anybody in the Cosmere wanting to hit the same level as the shards and be kind of known as well as the shards without being one. And I could see him aiming for that and like he is still the common man but he does still want recognition and i like i i still see him in that fight against the shards i guess even if he does not become one himself so i can i can see him being a shard i don't know i always get a dawn shard (laughs) when you said you could see him whatever those are among mm-hmm. the shards, I was like, he better not have found the seventeenth shard too, or it's going <laughs> to. Yeah. No way, no, Kelsey is no, way no. too meddly. No he's way, he's too much love meddler. No, yeah. oh, he's got a lot of the website. He's got a lot of behind the seventeenth shard, so just you all have to step down as mod. I can't be associated. <laughs> the difference between seventeenth spelled out and one seventy eight. It's, yep. it's yep. different. Yep. yep, it's different. But yes, this is this is why I find them so relatable, right? That's <laughs> because you want to be an admin. <laughs> I, I want to be, to I, be, want to be <laughs> I want to walk amongst the gods, but I also want to be the common man, right? Okay. Okay. I have concerns about Argent. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like I, much the like idea, has it in hand. I like the idea of Kelsier and Bavadin uh being a ship. I can totally see that. I think it would be one of those ships where like everybody knows that this is a bad idea, including the people in it, and it's just doomed to f- failure and like I don't know explosions and flames and stuff. But let's do it anyway. Let's have some fun while we explode ourselves and go out. As it's like probably Wayne says, I don't know. 
my um, bitterest enemy is very is the same as me is a great ship foundation. I'm very into mm-hmm. that vibe. True. As we we've been going on forever. Any final thoughts? Final thoughts. Kelsier's the worst, and I hope everybody realizes that. Kelsier is the best, and I hope everyone realizes. That. Civil War. <laughs> Civil, Civil War. War. I would say that for me, I think that this conversation has reinforced that if Brandon is not writing Secret History 2, he better get Dan or Isaac on it because <laughs> there are so many things that it's impossible that like tie to Kelsier directly that it is impossible to talk about from the bands to the temple to the history of the Southerners and all of that sovereign stuff. And I just don't see doing another time jump only to rewind back to explain all of that yeah. to us. It seems like they're going to be moving, they're going to be handling other challenges and like I, I have hope for the terrorist prophecies getting some more information because of the Discord thing. But other True. than that I think they're moving forward. So I think there's got to be or he can just start wobbing about it. That's also a possibility. But like we need some information here, Brandon. We're, the series is over, this little part. Mm. I would be disappointed if the information only came from Wobs. There's a lot of holes. It's not ideal, for sure. Yeah. We really need it, I think. In general, the more we talk about Kelsia, the more I am excited for Era 3 over Storm Y5, because, like, I'm I'm just happy to read about more Kelsia. I'm like, Alex. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, 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 I do have a final thought that I would okay. like to direct your attention to because I didn't realize the first, this, the first three times I read the book. Uh-huh. In his epilogue, right? So, he, so Maris, or rather in Maris's epilogue, Maris is walking into Ghostblood's HQ Ellendale edition. And uh, she's ushered into a room that is kind of dark and she's like, oh, maybe I need to wait here. And at some point she realizes she's not alone in this room and there's a big chair with a figure in there that is all like shrouded in shadow but there's a gleaming metal spike which is i will i don't know when but i will at one point pay pay somebody to paint that but so that happens right and then they have a little chat and like kelsier sometimes leans forwards and sometimes backwards but like it's a conversation that happens in a dark room that is purposefully like made so Kelsier is in shadow. And then Marisi leaves. Twin So is in the room. Glavo shows up from behind the chair where he was hiding the entire time. <laughs> and Kelsier, without read the chapter, without getting up from the chair, just reaches and turns on turns on the light switch. He kept the room purposefully dark and shadowy. <laughs> just to be dramatic. Just for dramatic effect. That sounds like Kelsier right there. That is for so dramatic. Kelsier. <laughs> like you cannot Kelsier more than Kelsier kelsier in that moment. Or maybe to hide something that Marasi shouldn't have seen well, that, about that's true the too. setup. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. But no, it was drama. You but know, like, it's drama. It, that, I want to see that scene in a movie. Like just uh, <laughs> like Marasi leaves... Flip. It's like, oh, hey, the, the, the oppressive fluorescent lights. Like, hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm gonna kill her or what? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my final thought is hashtag Kelsey <laughs> and Kelsey is gonna do it. Kelsey is gonna become autonomy and kill Sazed with it. Boom. Kelsey is gonna be God. I'm not like gonna necessarily be upset that there's gonna be more Kelsier. Like, it's probably going to be interesting. He's always an interesting character, but I'm just going to be mad about whatever he does the whole time. That's yeah. that's all that's going to happen. That's fair. You know, it's fine. Cool. Well, I'm resigned to do it. Awesome. Let's go on to who's that Cosmere character? This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Call. Welcome to Who's That Cosmere Character, the game show where you sent five clues and a character to WTCC at 17char.com. I read each clue aloud, and after each clue, everyone has a chance to guess who's that Cosmere Character. We are extremely tired after this very long recording. Who knows how long the final product will be? Will it be longer than the Bottom Misham episode? 
Probably, I think this is the longest raw recording, and we're just starting Who's That Cosmere character, so Excellent. yikes. <laughs> nice. If, nice. If it's uh, not longer, it could have been, because we behaved. We were holding back. We could have yeah. talked more. I don't know if we needed to talk a about the fuse more. mechanics, but, you know, whatever. That's not what I'm sick good. for, too. Oh, <laughs> man, it's a marathon. <laughs> it is kind of a miracle. So anyway, we're just going to do two of these. Sorry. Uh, the episode's long <laughs> enough. This first one is sent by Mini Fox 14 Clue one, this character is very loyal. Raise. It's not raise. Tensoon. <laughs> it's not Tensoon. I think I have to give that up. Yeah, Dang no, it. you you've said it at the same time. Bye. Bye, guys. We're moving on. David. Why am I reading those uh, lines loyal. today? Loyal. <laughs> it's just because we had a 10-hour call yesterday, Alex, and we're just on the same wavelength. It's weird. Do you think I got you psychic know. powers from this cold? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Silence divine. Are you, are you, did I you go so to well. Ashen? <laughs> there you go. I am going to choose Wayne because he's very loyal to wax. That's true, but it's not Wayne. Clue two. This character is not in any flashbacks. That's such a weird way to phrase that. <laughs> is it like is it like capital F flashbacks? Like the uh, it's not capitalized. Like the Stormlight Archive I, one. I mean, I, I would. I will. I will choose to interpret that as Stormlight. I think oh, that's oh. a pretty like, safe assumption. Yeah. It like rules out so many people though. Like you're like wait. <laughs> Is this person a flashback? Yes, yeah, like every, like even though, yeah. Just, just it watch pattern? it. It's not pattern. Nice. Hmm. Watch it be like some hmm. Taldani character, you know, easy. <laughs> yeah, that's the other option. It's, it's there's a series with no flashbacks, and you're just like, oh <laughs> yeah. well. There are flashbacks in in White Sand. That's true, actually. That's true. There's one in Secret History. <laughs> Oh, uh, loyal, not in any flashbacks. Uh-huh. How about Cell? Such a it's not Cell. Um, I would argue that she. <laughs> I feel like she did. What flashback, flashback is she in? Oh, she... oh, oh, the one with the one spren that like zips around him that we don't know. Well, She's also, like... also that she like glues soldiers' mm-hmm. boots together and stuff like that when he's in the. We don't know that was her. Could have been a wind spren. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Unless we have a wob, we don't know. It's not in the book. That's how I live my life. <laughs> That's how I live my life, too. It's a good way to live. Oh, yo. Flashbacks. Zane. It's not Zane. Mm, this b- ain't loyal. <laughs> I had a Zane weird loyal relationship too. with loyalty. Yeah, you know, he's loyal to himself. That's how it works, right? Um... Hmm. Maya. It's not Maya. Clue three. This character has switched masters. What? That's a design. It's not design. I like that though. Mm, that's really good. That's a good one. That's really good. Does nail appear this... any flashbacks? <laughs> I'm gonna go with nail. It's not nail. No. Uh, he appears oh. in Finley's. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, you're yeah. right. Damn. <laughs> Is it like all? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because the prologue. That's a good the... guess. Otherwise, though, mm. Is the prologue a flashback. It's Eric. Is the prologue a flashback? No, but yes. he appears independently in a flashback that is that yeah. covers the same events no, as the prologue. I agree. I agree. But I'm saying I'm now trying to. I'm, I'm, I'm looking oh, for a okay. ruling on if the prologues are flashbacks <laughs> or not. Oh, let's go with yes. They're flashbacks. Sure. Okay. Let's okay. go with yes. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> like, judge, I need a ruling. <laughs> yeah. God, this is so dumb. Yeah, the not enough flashback clue is like astounding. It it just kills all of the guesses. Who is the flashback character for Book Two? Shalon. 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 Uh, <laughs> Zeth. It's not Zeth. Was it Zeth? Double check. Not Zeth. It's not. He appears in lots of flashbacks. Does he? What flashbacks does he appear in? Eric said that the prologues count. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Tough tough crap of Genny. I would be tricky and say Vale just because I don't have a better guess. Not Vale. Clue four. This character has had no POVs. (sighs) Yeah, that's not useful at all. 
Okay. I'm like, I literally am like, is it a dog? Like, <laughs> uh, felt. It's not felt. Nice. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess Sack the Axe Hound. It's not Sack the Axe Hound. <laughs> Your face tells me that I feel like we're like onto something. I don't now. know. I don't know. Maybe Sack I just find is, it funny. Sack is an AVR. That's true. Sack is an well, AVR. Oh, but I know scrack. that. Scrack. scrack. <laughs> That's true. I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I. Yeah. I'm, Sorry, say that again. Yes, yes. it's not gas. I feel like Featherhead idea. Oh, I you did, but I already guessed this round. Yeah. You can guess first next round without even hearing a clue. I've done that before. I don't know that this character has a name, but <laughs> uh oh, is it Clef Chin? <laughs> Gliss? It's not Gliss. Clue five. This character is a horse. See. Oh, I was gonna get that's not okay. All right, cool. I did change uh, it, Minnie Fox. Sorry, I thought the last clue was too vague, <laughs> so I'm changing it. It's a horse. I would see, I was gonna guess the AVR that Lyft found yeah, Gary's it's not that AVR. AVR. The fucking Bronco Calden gets on Gallant? Dreamstorm or whatever. No, it's gotta oh, it's be not Gallant. Dreamstorm, but it is Gallant. Yay! Gallant, yeah. Hooray! Yep. Cool. Nice. I, I had to revisit, like, okay, okay, so sure, blood, that was Adolin, but okay, so that, that died. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, that bird, like, went back to his corpse and was, like, really sad about no, it. That's, that's so loyal. That is, very, that, is, that is very loyal. Very that's a very loyal that's bird. I, I yep. would concur. Well, yep. Loyal bird. Yep. All right. This last one is from, or who's that Cosmic character? Priority Q from Pandromeda. Uh, you can oh, hey. submit your... Who's that cosmic character priority cues for as little as $10 a month on Patreon? And maybe that's worth it to you. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I know it's clearly um, worth it to her. Yeah. Nice. We, we met at the con. We, we appreciate the support. We do. We do. <laughs> Clo one. This character's from Roshar. Sure, Blood. It's not Sure, Blood. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> Renarin. It's not Renarin. Tien. It's not Tien. I'm going to guess Kaladin. It's not Kaladin. Clue two. This character is old. Terravan GM. It's not Terravan GM. Adjotagia. I no. was about to say. I'm glad I hesitated. <laughs> Maybe you do have psychic powers. With your <laughs> psychic powers. Adjotagia was a villain in one of my fics, and I've never forgotten about her. She's like one of the minor characters I enjoy quite a bit. Nice. Uh, old Rosharans. Wow, Alex. What about Thanks. that apothecary yeah. that sells them the antiseptic on the Shattered Plains? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm just going to go with no. Vistim. Vistim? No, it's not Vistim. Clue. Uh, clue three uses she, her pronouns. What about the stump? It's not the stump. I like it. Cheery, cheery. It's not cheery, cheery. I like that too. That's good. Also not old. Cheery, cheery, not old. Baby. Yeah, not old. <laughs> okay, never mind. I don't like that one. <laughs> Sorry. My my short term memory is only one clue long. Yeah. Raboniel. It's not Raboniel. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do I dare say Sill? I don't know. Say Sill. It's not I Sil. Say Sil. Ancient daughter Sill. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Really before she, that she's very old. That would be true. It's true. Clue four. This character has interacted with a bondsmith. Night Watcher? Got all the other clues. It's not the oh, Night Watcher. One of you is going to try to guess cultivation, and I'm going to remind you that this character is not from Rashar. <laughs> That's true. That's fair. It's a fair point. Okay. But you know who right, is? Now she is. She's got her pure tones. All of the unmade <laughs> by Ada Mishram. It is by Ada Mishram, Alex. <laughs> nice. Nice. Very good. Sure. Very Thank good. You. Pondromeda Thank gave you me that. two two options because I, I needed to actually revise one. Uh, by the way, Jess, uh, option two, which had different clues, was Rabonial, fun fact. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> the different no, clues, fun, just coincidentally. Uh, clue five was this character has never appeared on screen. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I got you. Excellent. The psychic powers paid off. Nice. Very good. Well, we hope you enjoyed however long this episode was. Uh, you can find us for even more news, discussion, theories, and fun and arguments about Kelsier that you could ever want on 17 
for all your news discussion and theories. Uh, and we have a Discord server where it's also that. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud. Leave a comment below about how angry you are with Alex or how much you agree with Evgeny. Boom. Let's go. Get that engagement. We never established the, the hashtags. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, in, in the words of Brennan Lee Mulligan, get in the comments. Get in the comments. <laughs> get in That's the comments. Right. Yeah, get in the comments. <laughs> Especially because this video needs it with its vague title. Okay, get get in there. Uh, also, I'm my career tea, in case you forgot about that. That's true. Yell, about, That's true. That's yell true. at me for that, too. Leave us a review on iTunes. Support us on Patreon for as little as a dollar. So we will see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Go make an omelet. Ah!